And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Oh. Hey! Shh! Hi! <laughs> no, not no, yet. Not yet. Oh. oh. Now. Now. All right. Oh. Hi, you guys. This is Ginger Cook, and I want to introduce you, reintroduce you, to my good friend Daniel Elliott, who is a professional artist here in Houston and has... Um, uh, kindly offered to be on our show today and show us an acrylic painting and talk about two point perspective. Yes, two yes, per yes. two point, two not point. one point, two point. If you remember, I did a one point with the doc. Well, we're going to take you a, a step further and show you two point. And Daniel has a really fantastic way of explaining it. We've got a chalkboard out. He's also going to draw it on there, and then he's going to show you how to paint it. And at the end of the show, those of you who are watching us uh, as our live audience, okay. Uh, those of you who are watching us uh, will also do a 10-minute a uh, painting of Daniel's that someone will win tonight. He's going to do a 10-minute painting of himself? Yeah. That is so cool. Uh, not, not oh, you're going to do it of him. You're doing a 10-minute painting no, of Daniel. No, That's no, what you just no, said. No, I, I love that, that idea. I didn't say that. <laughs> I and, think that's and, great. And, shh, shh, peanut gallery. And, oh. and. <laughs> There's no peanuts over here. Ellie's downstairs. The county department's <laughs> in the basement there. Okay, well, someone else is going to be in the basement in a minute. Okay, so here's, Sammy. here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. Uh, Daniel, not his finished painting tonight, okay, the one that he finishes, not the 10-minute one that someone's going to win, but the finished, the big one he's doing, what size is it? It's 9 by 12. 9 by 12. That one is going to be part of our fall art auction, and it's when it's a, John will uh, photograph it and put it up, and we'll tell you a little bit more about the uh, Ginger Cook original far, fall art auction that's available now <laughs> at gingercookauction.com, right? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Gingercookauction.com. Yep. All right, so what, now we're ready. So, Daniel, take it away. All right. Well, do you want me to drop down now? Yeah. Nobody told me to drop down. You know, the uh, camera guy needs to know what the uh, people want. Oh, well, the well, people want you to drop the camera down now to the Yeah, board. okay, we've done that now. And All we right. want to tell people to subscribe, yeah. Oh, people, yeah, don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. you got to subscribe right now. Oh, and one more thing. Daniel has a playlist <laughs> on our channel. So if you want to see more of Daniel's paintings on our this channel, uh, just type in. We have a playlist just for his artwork. Okay, go ahead. All right. I'm going to draw it in chalk very quickly. Just to give you an idea, two-point perspective is a really great way to give the illusion of three dimensions in a painting. So first you pick a horizon line. Now, for reference, this is not going to be precise because we're limited in time. We have a show. But basically you got your points. You can pick them and put them anywhere across your horizon. Uh, I find it a lot easier to just pick really close to the corner edge just a little bit. And then for, say, a building, because generally for architecture, this is where two-point perspective uh, really works best, is, or at least that's what I find most functional. And so your vanishing point, you have now two. Instead of one vanishing point, you'll have two. So here, well, close enough. Here we go. There's one vanishing point here. And the other side of this building would go this way. Cool. And we pick where our bottom is. That's where the bottom of the building is. That's you got it. How tall the building is. You and this got it. line has to be parallel to the sides of the canvas, right here. Yes, yeah. it does. That vertical line has to, you can't have it crooked. Okay. There we go. Oh. And then we can figure out how large we want our building to be. And since I'll be painting a lighthouse later, uh, not going to be too large. And watch this. Where's the spritzer? There's a tub of towel -y thing to wipe it off too if you're not if it's not erasing well. This is like a five dollar chocolate. Uh, here we you know, go. There's, <laughs> did you just throw this at me? Yes. <laughs> this this there's this is to get 
get paint off your hands, you guys, but it also works really good for everything, and certainly like for cleaning chalkboards. Yeah, All right, I'll now. I'll put my little line back in down the middle, just so we have our horizon back. Okay, that's our horizon line, right? That's, that's our where horizon. The, that's where the sky meets the land if you there are it. no mountains, you guys. That's the horizon line, okay? All there'll right. Be a, there'll be a test after. Ha! <laughs> And again, yeah. I'm doing this in chalk just so that it's a little bit easier for everyone to see. And if I want this to have a... What did I do before? Let's square this up. And I'll let me go this way. I'll let me go this way. And I'll make a little roof right here. And then we're going to round this because it's going to be a lighthouse. And then we round the bottom over here. Find my little line here to there. There we go. Simple lighthouse Find in perspective. Beam. Wow, is that not cool, you guys? I uh, make some rocks or something. There we go. So that's that's simple. the game plan. And if you wanted to see the lines, sometimes this helps is to see the actual construction lines. So. So you can kind of see how these all line up. Come on. And... So you can kind of see how the different angles from each would all disappear right about there. So how, do you, how did you decide this angle? I made that one up because this one right here is just Basically, if I had cubed this and made a cube out of this, cut the cube in half, a little simple geometry. Okay. Ooh. I know, it's, I, I know, I know, <laughs> it's awful, the G word. Uh, <laughs> but that wasn't a digital word. word. It's, it's, it's basic geometry. I, ju I just basically uh, put a diagonal across what would have been a square. That's all. Okay. Made all right. it real. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, uh, I'm sure it does to somebody, and enough people are going to get it. <laughs> make a square. Do that again up there. Just okay. make a cube. Just, right. I'm not sure that everybody gets that, so we want to. Um, we really do want to get that. Okay, so there's your cube. Okay. Okay. And then. You just take off the top. Okay. You got it. That's basically it. Perfect. All right. So we wanted. To, I mean, you guys wanted to know that, right? I mean, I, I figured you did. So all right. So we, everybody's ready for Daniel to start painting. Y'all done yep. with this? Yep. All done. All right. And before I learned about the magic chalkboard, I had started my original, so I may as well just quickly mark it in. And but here's my horizon, and sometimes you end up with those little more rounded areas and there we go. Now we can start painting. Awesome. Okay, so you've got some toys out there. And I have some, some toys. I some have paint. some toys. So what colors are we using today? All right, today I've got phthalo blue, burnt umber, a little bit of Matisse's antique white, some titanium white, and I brought out that nickel Titianate yellow, and also known as Naples yellow. I love this color. Not enough people actually really pay attention to it. I find it a very light and bright and wonderful yellow. So okay. we're, we're going to mess around with a relatively limited palette. I may as well scooch this down so everyone can see the palette. Um, basically all of my darks are going to come from here and then I'll tone throughout. But since it's going to be water sky, some clouds, and a lighthouse, <clears throat> I wasn't really thinking we need too many more colors and rather right. than confuse everybody, let's keep it simple. Absolutely. A little we're bit of the kiss principle. Yeah, keep it simple, you guys. So, I mean, this is kind of exciting. And um, I think I think there's a lot of different ways that artists approach artwork. And I think the idea is that one of the reasons that, uh, you know, we'll show you uh, artwork from some of the, our old DGs, our old dead guys, is because they have different ways of painting things. They were all different. Van Gogh certainly painted differently from Van Noir and Van Noir from um, Cezanne and so forth. Well, Daniel, uh, you know, has his own uh, really awesome way of painting. And I think that... Um, I think it's fun to see how uh, 
each different artist approach a subject, okay? So, um, and also he's left-handed, so for you guys that are left-handed, this might be interesting too, watching kind of how he holds the brush and so forth, which I think is kind of neat. Do we have any questions, John? Uh, no, ma'am. No questions? No questions? Okay. We must be doing awesome. Yeah, everybody said they're ready for the test. They're ready for the test. They've got that, right? All so right. So, okay, now, so to, and to review then, we all know the horizon line is where the sky meets the water or the land if there are no mountains. Correct. And Correct. the two-point perspective is Daniel finds the best place to do his points. It's just very close to each edge, and then he works off of that, okay? So that's... That is correct. That's it. Uh, you know, and that's something, you know, that um, I wouldn't have thought to do. So, I mean, I, I, I think this is great. I think you can't... Um, well, it gives me an, a lot of room, as anyone that's ever seen me paint or seen any of my work. I, I like skies an awful lot, so... I tend to uh, <clears throat> leave as much real estate for something big and dramatic in the in the air. Oh, well, awesome! That's, so, right. that's sort of my favorite. And now I'm just using a little bit of the burnt umber, as well as a little bit of the warm white or the antique white, and I'm just kind of getting rid of the little pastel chalk that we were working with. Kind and of erasing it, right? Kind of erasing it out. Well, I would like to bit. say uh, thank you, Daniel, for being here, being there with Ginger tonight. Always such a pleasure and learning experience when you are Ginger's guest. Aww, also, I, I want to sweet. say something. Any donations that you guys want to, uh, you know, contribute, um, uh, you know, tonight, anybody decides to donate, these are all going to Daniel, okay? Uh -huh. uh, Daniel is in between jobs right now because uh, he used to work for Jerry's and now he's working for himself. And he's in between uh -huh. jobs right now. So anybody that wants to contribute to... Uh, uh, to Daniel and his painting career, uh, feel free to do so, and we'll make sure that 100% of that, uh, minus our uh, visa charges or whatever, the PayPal charges, you can either do it on our website or through... Which would be better. Which would be better, because he'll get the most if you go to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. John will put up a link. And no, show John you. won't. The no, gals will. The gals, moderators. Somebody will put up a link for you guys. <laughs> and, and again, if this is a... Um, if you do that, just write for Daniel on the you know oh, on the description and just that we'll, and we'll know because you know uh you know for a lot of times you know just i'm just can i can i share a little yeah. bit about your experience sure. daniel for years was the manager of jerry's this is how i've known him for years and um uh he had he was in line for a big promotion which we thought was just nifty keen and he was going to be a district manager and so um he, he went up to do his son's graduation and um from high school right yep which is a big deal. You know, you get a kid through high school these days, that's huge, right? And, and uh, his other son was going to some fancy private school, and um, this was all, you know, so his last little shekel was, 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 uh, was able to do that, but he wasn't concerned about it because guess what? He had this... Um, uh, had a new position He had coming. a new position coming, and actually with a higher pay. And so in the meantime, they'd hired another manager at, at Jerry's down there in Houston, and then when he gets back, they say, oh, guess what? We've, we've counted the money. We can't pay you. We've decided not to hire you. So suddenly, with no warning, not so much as to myself, that's my own personal opinion. I think that's kind of mean. If you want to let somebody go, uh, I think that you just ought to tell them so that they have a chance to do something else. So anyway, um, Daniel uh, takes care of his, uh, his uh, father who's got dementia. His mom passed away a couple of years, so he spends his time taking care of his dad and painting. And um, uh, so... I'm just going to put out a pitch for Daniel here. Aww. He would never ask you guys for anything, but I'm going to put out a pitch. If anybody wants to send something for Daniel, because his artwork, and listen, when he sells paintings, his artwork is he's such a col he's so collected in Houston. Of course, he's got his art in galleries, and, but sometimes a painting can sit in a gallery for months and not sell, all right? So this is something that uh, you know people don't realize. So anyway, like I say, if you want to send something Daniel's way, um, feel free to do so, and we'll make sure he gets it. How's that? Aww. We have a question. Yes. Sure. Uh, Karen asks, how do you avoid acrylics from looking chalky? Well, I'm doing exactly the wrong thing to do that <laughs> right now. Uh, I'm, uh, the best way is not to use a lot of water. And right now I'm using an, an absolutely near obscene amount of water You're to get this. You're uh, like watercolor. Yeah. I, basically, I'm, I'm turning my acrylics into watercolor at the moment. And the reason for that is really simple. I just want to get a little bit of tone in, into my underpainting, so that I can really focus on 
the rest of the color, and I will bring, uh, I'll, I'll bring the chroma, I'll bring the, the straight paint coming soon, uh, but whenever I'm kind of getting something mapped out, I don't regularly draw on my canvas first. Um, I tend to paint off the top of my head and make it up as I go along, so I'm always working with heavy amounts of paint. But when I do actually sketch something first, I'm going to get that sketch in with some value and some tone first, and I'll do that with a ton of water. And no, it's not the best practice, and no, it's not uh, what I would teach my students if I was uh, in the middle of a class. But to be honest, uh, as long as it's in the underneath, it's not going to hurt, and I know what's coming next. Uh, what's coming next, as soon as I have everything blocked in, is large, straight, pure paint. So large amounts of uh, a straight, pure paint. So if you do that, so you can also add medium. Out, if, if, basically, if you thin it out with a bunch of water, you're going to get your chalkiness. Oh, you're going to get super chalk, yeah. Okay. And if you use medium, um, we have medium around, don't we? Mm. Yep. There you go. A few drops of that will liquefy your paint and will keep the gloss. Uh, Right Keep now, the stage that I'm in requires none of that. All it needs is a little bit of value change laying around. So that is why I'm I'm actually doing this. Well, this is, this is great. Don't you guys think so? I mean, this is I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting to see what, what he's doing and how he's doing it. And um, uh, I, I'm, I think those are great questions. Now, Daniel is like the Encyclopedia Britannica when it comes to paints. And somebody wrote up, somebody wrote me recently... And, um, in fact, they were, uh, I don't want to say they were snide about it, but they were a little superior about it. Because remember then, when, I, when you were working at Jerry's as the manager, you kindly gave me all the, all the blue paints, all the mm -hmm. red paints, and all the yellow paints. And we did Adventures in Red, Adventures in right. Yellow, and Adventures in Blue. And so this one person uh, you know, wrote recently and said, um, I don't know why you don't uh, show the transparent um, yellows because of, uh, because the transparent yellows make a wonderful glaze. Yes, they do, and that's almost every yellow. Uh, with the exception of cadmiums, uh, most of your yellows are going to be on the transparent side. Okay, so in that Adventures in Yellow, then, there ought to have been some, even though they didn't yeah. say transparent yellow, they were slightly transparent. And mm -hmm. so if you use them with glazing medium, they would act as a glaze. Absolutely. So when Absolutely. do you use yellow as a glaze? Um, I'll use Indian yellows for glazes. Um, Indian yellow is my actually one of my favorite glaze colors, and that is naturally transparent. Okay, so I think that yeah. was in my, my adventures yeah. in yellows. Okay. If it was, no, that's that's totally transparent. Okay, so again, right, depending so I on who formulated it. I didn't mention it. that in the in the video. Uh, I just was showing you. Now, for instance, like just like lipsticks, you know, someone will say it's honey peach or it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, Tahitian. Uh, uh, red or something, but you know another brand of lipstick would call the same color something else. So do we run into that a lot in paints where um, Matisse is going to call this one color one thing and a golden another and Holbein something else? Sometimes uh, it's <sighs> with paints uh, there are a lot of made up colors, uh, and by made up it means they're not single pigment colors. Um, and so, yeah, you'll get um, Southern Ocean Blue is a very good example. It is a Thalo Turquoise, but it is a slightly different formula from Thalo Turquoise. And so, chemically, uh, they should be virtually identical, but there is a slight difference uh, in the way they formulate that. But it is very, very similar, and it's basically a, a Thalo Green. Uh, like a phthalo turquoise. And so, um, and when you go to, say, a Naples yellow, everyone, uh, Matisse uses pigment yellow number 53. This little thing down here at the bottom tells us what the chemical index number of the pigment is. Uh, others may formulate their Naples yellow with a different set of yellows. And so, that's not uncommon. What's that book that you like so much, that encyclopedia book that you like oh, so much? Oh, it's sitting right over keep, there. You know can, where it is. You uh, want to get the the Ralph Mayer, that is, that is the painter's that Bible. Book? Can the, you get that book, John, for, for us? Where is sure, it? where is it? It's sitting right over there. I saw it on... <laughs> it's 
white cover, red letters, and some black letters. It's uh, well, it's, uh, this is a book that you know. For instance, uh, you know, you sock folders, you all want this book. <laughs> I bought it and gave it to John right away, yeah. right? I just went, too much trouble to read. But this is a book that uh, really, I, we, we probably should have a link on Amazon for this before we show it to you, but we didn't do that. But this is, uh, this is the, the Artist's Handbook of Materials and Techniques by Ralph Mayer, fifth edition. This is a really serious artist. Have this book. This, uh, this gives you what? Cross-references from colors, right? You, it gives you cross-references and colors, techniques, materials uh, throughout history. The, it, it, it was a, a wonderful. It was a wonderful chronicle, and it is like an encyclopedia. And to give somebody an idea, I just was talking about pigment yellow fifty three. I'm gonna look at pigment yellow fifty three. I'm going to because that is nickel titanium yellow, nickel titanate yellow, and also known as just nickel yellow. So it, every one of your colors sometimes can go by a different name. Don't you think it's interesting? He knew exactly the page to find you guys. I mean, that in itself. I tell, <laughs> did I tell you he's got this book practically memorized? And but this is very helpful because sometimes that you're you're in you know you need a cross reference for that. Uh, maybe you're buying a color they don't your art store doesn't have the color that you want or you're wherever. But maybe another brand has it, but they're calling it something else. So you can cross reference stuff. It's kind of a good thing to have, you know, just yep. for. A reference book and for you know reading your tubes of paint and knowing what's in them I challenge everyone to go look at pull a tube of sap green and pull it by as many different companies as you can find and you'll find everyone formulates that color differently hmm. since I never buy green I'd have to take your word yep. for it well sap well, green um, well this one's a thalo viridian I bet you have a sap green lying around somewhere okay. um, and if you did Take a look, and it'll tell you it's either a two-color or a three-color, uh, three-pigment color, and each manufacturer comes up with their own little mix on it. So it's a mixed green. You got to keep painting while you're painting. I know. I know. I know. I, I hey, just distracted. came in from Kim Coors. Yes. Tell Dan you thank you for me. I was the fortunate one enough to win his <sighs> painting in the last auction. Thanks so much. I love it. Ah, you're welcome. Wow, how cool is so that? So you've already got a fan. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, someone, some, that, that's proof right there. Someone's going to win one today. Oh, I like that. There's your little awning thing. Yeah. I know. Just and what brush dark. are you using currently? I am using a number six silver brush something. Which ones are these? I don't know, silver brights or something. No, those are the cheapy things we got. Well, these are we got the whole set for like eight bucks from really um, from um, on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, <laughs> are you kidding? No, that's not bad for eight dollars. For, like for eight dollars for twelve of those, right? Are you kidding? No. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. Nice little brush, right? I mean, it yeah. was a good little cheapy one. We've got all kinds of brushes there, but a good little cheapy brush. Does um, Daniel always work with acrylic? Huh? Almost never. <laughs> He, you started out as an acrylic I started. Artist. I started out, uh, I, I painted in acrylics for about 20 years uh, exclusively, and then I moved back to oils. Because I started in oils, then I left for acrylics and came back to oils, and whenever I come here, I paint in acrylics. So this is this will yeah. be my second or third acrylic painting this summer. So, yeah, so I think that's kind of good, and I think at some point we'll probably... Uh, you know, Daniel and I, at some point, we'll want to, we're going to schedule some uh, videos uh, to do some actual tutorial videos that we'll have on our um, website for sale. And some of them might even be in oil. Yes. Um, that we might even do some, you know, he might take some of our um, acrylic paintings that I've got, or instance, an example, say something like, um, something like this, and then turn it into, and turn it into an oil painting, see? So he'll show you how he might do that because I'm telling you, it's not the same. You, you approach it, you don't approach it the same way. And, um, and, you know, some people, some people want to know that. And, you know, after all, John and I's main goal is to help everybody facilitate their best painting experience. And uh, sometimes just understanding paint order, depending on the medium you use. Because mm -hmm. like, I tell you what, I don't do airbrush at all. I don't do airbrush. And if I wanted to take up airbrush, I would find someone that did it and, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what you do, too. Like you've got, You were just recently doing some, some I, portraits. Char char charcoal. charcoal Portrait Workshop. 
and I don't like to draw or paint people in general, and they're not my favorite subject matter. And my friend was teaching a workshop, and it was absolutely invaluable. And I think everyone should challenge themselves with different subject matter from time to time. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, it, you know, try something. You know, we do on our website, we do one and two cookie, a three cookie, four cookie, and a box of cookie lessons. And, you know, we tell people to learn the basics first, but then if they want to challenge themselves to something a little bit more, you know, try something. Maybe it is a little bit more, um, uh, you know, out of your wheelhouse. But sometimes, sometimes you'll learn as much. I promise you, sometimes you learn as much from what doesn't work as what does work. Oh, absolutely. Don't you think so? Uh, I learn more from failure than I do from success. And, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, we offer on our website is, you know, is personal art coaching. And, uh, and what comes up oftentimes is that um, ha just having a, a second set of eyes look at artwork can be helpful, don't oh, you Oh, that is, uh, I have a couple of artist friends that get to preview everything before I post it. Because they keep me from posting some horror stories. Because, yes, even painters that have been painting all their lives, we have less than successful paintings come up. Yeah, you do. I mean, sometimes and you, you know, sometimes it's just that day, and then a lot of times that paintings that maybe you hate, everybody else goes, "Oh, I love that painting." And you're going, "Really?" Because mm -hmm. this was just five feet from the trash, right? Yep. And with a with a careful aim, I could go. I keep like all frisbee. of those around when I do a show because usually the one I like the least is the first one sold. That's it's, pretty much as us too. Yeah, John just said you, you said you can't decide what people like, and you're you just you just can't do that, you know. So, oh no. Um, people have different tastes, and when you're painting a painting, you have a specific set of goals in mind, and if you don't achieve those goals to your satisfaction, you feel like it's a failure. Others don't know what you had in mind, and they may just see all the successes that you had. Oh, that's a great, that's a great example of that, isn't that, you guys? That is absolutely a great thing to, um, a, a great way to put it, because you're right, because other people can see the successes. I think sometimes uh, we're, we're our own worst critic. Abs yes. But, again, as an artist, sometimes uh, when, we, when, when we do it right, and the one thing that we really cared about, that's, that's why the, the, the value is twofold, having other friends look at your work. Because I have put out some works that I really wish I had had a friend look at. I was excited. This part looked great. Everything was great. And... Um, it's great to have that second set of eyes. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. Self-editing and being self-critical can be difficult. Let's tackle a few of these questions that are flying by. Let's oh, cool. go back to our water painting that you seem to be doing. Yes. Let me ask you a few questions Surely. to both combine. What about underbinding, doing it in, in that order? Is there a chance of the paint flaking off when watered down so much? Is there a magic ratio to keep in mind? You know, I have never had an acrylic painting flake in my life, and I've been doing this for 20 plus years. Um, I'm certain that if I was doing this much water on something large enough, I could probably do. But when you see how much actual paint ends up on top, that should be more than enough to, to hold it together. Um, and like I said, medium is the preferred but for some reason, today, I am feeling the water. And I'm going to go with what I'm feeling. Well, you got to. You got yeah. to. You know, and, it, and it's kind of fun. What else you got, John? I uh, just wondered if you have any undercoating, uh, underpainting on this particular canvas. No. Gesso. Gesso. Just gesso. That's it. Because what he's basically doing is an underpainting, you guys. This, this is the it, underpainting. This is, but instead of doing one solid color, he's doing it in stages. Does that make sense? Because he's designing it as he goes. He's designing you got it. it as he goes. So he's, uh, I'm he's putting in different lights and dark values. That aqua color that you used, oh, like an hour ago. <laughs> this right here? Yeah. The, no, the one, I think it was the ocean one. Okay. Did you add Naples yellow to get that aqua? or nope. what What would you use to make that aqua? That, oh yeah, I forgot. You guys can't see my palette completely. No. Um, that was a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of phthalo blue, and a little bit of the antique white. And but that's antique all. white has a touch ha of, has a a touch touch of yellow. It has a touch of yellow in it, so good call. Good call, viewer. That's right. <laughs> I, wanted, I always wanted to say that. Good call, viewer. 
All right, so that's, I mean, these are important, you know, stuff to remember. And also, remember, we're using professional acrylics. We're not using student-grade acrylics. And the whole ball game changes on student acrylics, you guys. If you're using a professional-grade acrylic like Matisse or Golden or Holbein, you're using one of those. And in some, and, and even Liquitex, if you're a heavy body, you're using those. There's, uh, you probably list some others, but uh, those are three that come to mind. You know, you're going to get... Be better pigment and a much better effect, okay? Something I want to mention too, what, that you guys, here's a rule that did you guys know, this is one of my did you knows, did you know that your sky is lighter toward the horizon? Oh, pretty much always unless it's a storm. I'm just pointing that out since mm -hmm. Daniel is making that lighter. And sometimes yep. I'll see someone who will send us, uh, you know, we have this great uh, Facebook club Yep. And um, and people are posting their pictures and sometimes I'll see an ocean picture go by, and they've got the same dark all the way down to the horizon line. And you guys really um, got to consider uh, lightening it up as you get as it starts to hit the water. Or even this, if it's or just land. even if it's just a tiny bit, because sometimes you can go outside and it looks like it's all one color, but you really got to squint. Mm. Because if not, it when when too much area is all one value, it flattens and it all becomes one distance okay very good can your palette be moved to the left of you where the paint tubes are or sure is that, too far, is that too much of a reach for you? i just want everyone to forgive me for reaching across ginger yeah we don't care okay as long as no one minds oh, he's reaching across there, it's there all you right. go i'll try to I'll do, i won't bite your hand as it goes by how's that that would be awesome i need this for later okay so. <laughs> all right so that's good so what else so. you got john a uh, ton of donations have come in. Oh, Aww. have they? That's so, thank you so much, you guys. That is lovely. I've got to try to bring them up. All right. Well, I'm going to do a quick... Try to darken in my little shack here. Yeah. I, I hope you don't mind me just explaining no. how you how that, that happened to you, because I just it really was... thought that was so... I'm sorry. I just thought that was just beyond crummy. You know, you know? it was... Uh, <laughs> Business is business. I, I don't take anything personally. It was... Uh, Your friends can, though. Yeah, absolutely. Your, your friends come uh, up, up and down and go, man. Well, business is business. They made a decision, and that's fine. You know, I will survive, and I am doing all right. I'm well, we think they made happen. the wrong decision. Well, you know what? We'll find out. I'm sure, you know, they had their reasons, and that's okay. Yeah. I don't hold grudges. And, you know, I made business decisions while I was there, and they made, they made business decisions while I'm not there. So, you know, the business goes on. Uh, I still shop there. They're still my friends. Uh, so it just uh, it wasn't expected is all. And sometimes that's, a, sometimes that's enough just to be difficult. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 a lot of times, uh, well... Oh, you remember the, t the t tell them about when they when they fired all the art teachers. Well, they made a decision that they weren't going to be in the business of teaching art any longer, and they decided to get rid of art oh. instruction within their stores. All twenty three stores, and, and all all the artists were fired within three days, except for mine because I kept me. you. Get, I, and you kept me, I and they kept me because. Apparently, you know, you kept oh. me, but and you kept me. And, and, but our store was the only one that kept going. Yep. And you know where I worked in Houston, I kept going for the other, the other two years. But everybody else, oh, was let go. Had to. They had to do it, um, or they decided to do it. And you know, like I said before, business is business. Some things uh, are better for business than others. I. I think people are good for business. Absolutely. You because, you know, without the people, you have no business. And, you know, Absolutely. the thing of it is, is that, you know, some, you can rationalize, and here's what I say. You can rationalize um, and say, well, we've got this space. It's got, it takes up a lot of tables. And if we counted all the beans, we mm -hmm. could make more money with the kiosk of brushes and paint yep. than we could with this artist. And these artists are here, and they're not buying enough stuff from us. But the thing of it is, is that um, how much do you spend a year on advertising? I mean, what mm. do you spend on advertising? Because those artists are all advertising you and your stuff. And um, that's where they're shopping. Their friends are shopping. Yep. Um, and, and I'll tell you what, because of the Internet, I mean, years ago, a brick-and-mortar store, if, 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 um, if that was your store. But nowadays, 
we're all such uh, consummate shoppers. <laughs> you know, if we're, if we're for instance, uh, uh, the first thing we do is look online and say who's got the best deal. Yeah. And uh, and then we go and buy it, and 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 it may there's very little brand loyalty to a store unless they cultivate it. Absolutely. They, you have to cultivate. If you want the customers to keep coming back, you've got to make them love you. Uh, well, in other words, everybody. I used to. You know, years ago, I used to sell cars, and uh, this years and years ago, back, back when I was in my 30, 30s, and that was a you know, about a three or four year career, and I was very good at it. But one of the things that You're we understood... You're good at selling stuff? One of the things that we discussed, you know, that I know was, yeah, yeah, it'd be funny, but one of the things was is that you could buy a car anyway. You could buy, if you were in a city like San Diego, you could buy a Honda car from, you know, a dozen different dealers, or you could just go buy a Ford. So why would you want to buy from that person? What made that experience so that you wanted to be with that person? And that's what I'm talking about here with the... with. I mm -hmm. personally feel, this is a little tirade I'm on here, but I personally feel that if, a, if an art company wants brand loyalty, you've got to be loyal to your customers. I would agree. You know, that's, that's I think. And, and one of the ways that you, you know, show that, you know, okay, so I've got to fire all these art teachers because I can make more money. Are you going to make more money in the next 10 seconds? Why not say, listen, next month we're going to close all the, oh, not in three days, finish your paintings next month. I'll give you a chance to find another place to work. Uh, next month, we're going to close all, you know, we're going to decide to do something else. But I, the, the, for me, that three-day decision was extraordinary. Yeah. Well, that's why I gave you a three-year notice or a two-year notice. Yeah, you gave me a two-year <laughs> notice. I gave you a two-year notice. Well, and there's a beginning and an end right. to everything, and we understand that. And so anyway, so we're, um, we're back to uh, one of the things that we try to do in our art academy, John and I, is that besides having awesome lessons and everything, it's customer services, everything does. John is up there calling people back. In fact, you know what? We even changed our phone so that when we when we dial somebody, it says that uh, Academy of Fine Art, uh, oh, wow. Cook Academy, well, it, it doesn't just say Michigan because people didn't know who Michigan, you know, John was from right. Michigan using his phones. We changed it so people could, could realize it was us when he calls people Aww, back. Oh, that's very sweet. What were you telling people recently, John? Something about how to, what was the last call that you had um, about uh, not being able to see see lessons on YouTube? Oh, that was your video packs, your video personal and what art What was coaching. the solution for that person, you remember? Of course I remember. Oh, of course you do. Would you care to share it with us? <laughs> sure, I'd love to. I knew it, I knew it, see? That's Apparently an update happened to our ticket system where they're now putting the link that Ginger puts in for your video pack, if she did one for you, into an actual video player. And apparently on the iPad, you can't expand the window. And that was very frustrating for one of our members. But if you click your finger over it, it shows you that you can go to YouTube. Just click on the YouTube words, and it'll take you to YouTube and you can expand the window there and have full access to it. And she was very happy with that and it seemed to work for her. Oh, it did. And we got a good, beautiful painting as a result of the, uh, the, the personal art coaching. But I mean, John's always up to date on all these, uh, all these things, right? Because I mean, the technology is changing all the time. So it's not just painting lessons, it's technology too. You know, there's always something, always something. And, and, and I think you're fighting that with art materials too, aren't you? Oh, it's there's a there's new things that come along all the time. And um, anything struck you that you really like this year that happened? I there's a company named PBO that has a new paint that's coming that should be a lot of fun to play with, which is a very 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 matte acrylic paint called Matte Pub, and that should hit the market sometime this year. And I'm kind really? of excited by it. Yes, it's very nice. So what would be the advantage? Would it, would it feel more like an oil painting when it was painted matte? Uh, no, actually, it just, uh, I really loved the, I, I got to play with it a little bit at NAMTA, which is one of the materials shows, and the colors were beautiful, and the finish on it was amazing. That It was, it was velvety matte finish on it. Sounds, really? like, yes. sounds like an acrylic wash. Almost like an acrylic wash. And... Uh, honestly, it was similar to, 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 to the feel of painting with house paint, except with color in it, which was really cool. Wow, that's interesting. So was that's it, what's the name of the company? It's called Pebio or Pebio, and the, the name of the product is called Matte Pub. P 
P-U-B. And uh, I don't hmm. know when it's due to arrive on our shores, but it'll be coming. Where is it made? It's made in France. In France? Oui, oui. Wow. Yes. Doesn't sound like a French word, does it? Yeah, it does. Does it? Hey, a couple more questions are sure. coming in. Would you get the same effect using a medium that you did with your water? I would, except I wanted it to evaporate quickly and dry quickly. Um, and because it doesn't really matter in that underpainting what the finish looks like, it, I find it much easier just to use water, let it be done. Um, I'm sure someone from one of the paint companies will go, you shouldn't show people that, but uh, no. The medium is very, very, very important, but at the same time, uh, in an early... I, I really was trying to get more of a watercolor effect just to get some tone underneath. Just so you, you notice, I have mind. not been loading my brush with water since. Mm -hmm. No. Um, can you use student-grade acrylics for underpaintings? You can, but I I don't find much use in student grade paints. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I really, really don't. Uh, there's so little color in their color, and uh, it takes so much to get the same color you do with a heavy body. Exactly, you're and, not money ahead. And so I generally I have very little use for for really junky paint. Um. Is antique white different than unbleached titanium? Yes. It's yes, it is. Yellow. We have some of that, too, yep. somewhere. The antique white's got a bit of yellow in it. And, yeah, um, and um, the unbleached is right here. And Can you see it? Can you see the two colors together? Can you see it? It's got a little more brown in it, unbleached titanium. Yep. I can see it. Okay. There you go. And it may be difficult sometimes uh, on, a, you know, on a screen the color of antique white in, in real life is closer to that of butter. Really? Th th yeah. Well, I, think it, I think it's more of a buttery color. It's a, a little less yellow than butter, but it's still pretty darn close like to butter. I like this green that you made here. That's pretty... That's hey, that was, we'd like to thank That Vicky was just a little bit of thalo in the T-Shane. Donation. Who, who are we thanking? I'm thanking Vicky for her donation. Aw. Oh, thanks, Vicky. Thanks, Vicky. That's great. Daniel appreciates it. Ooh, it came here much. late. We're... Uh, any donations that come in tonight are, are going directly to Daniel. And so we appreciate that. Daniel appreciates that. We just, we got to keep him he, eating till his uh, painting cell, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Keep his dad, him and his dad eating till his painting cells, right? Absolutely. You know. Um, I like food like anybody does, you know. And uh, luckily for you, you've got, you've, uh, at least you, when you were working at Jerry's, you have paint. Yes. Oh, I've got more than enough supplies to last me a very long time. But, uh, what yellow did Daniel add to his watercolor? We're going was way that, back. That, in that time was now. that. That was that light yellow. Yep, that's Naples. That's a little bit of Titianate right there, and so that plus a little bit thalo of phthalo blue, and we'll get you this really beautiful tone. That's yeah. a gorgeous color. I have to Isn't say it? that that is a, just a splendid color. And if you add a little bit of the. Oh, look yeah, look. Ha, ha, ha. Wow, yeah. that's pretty. Fans are going crazy now. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, look at that. Wow. So water generally gets lighter as it comes toward the shore, you guys. It just kind of doesn't always, but often does. And, you know, the color of water will often, you know, says where something is. For instance, if he had done this uh, water all in ultramarine blues and stuff, we would have thought maybe the Atlantic Ocean, right? Mm. Absolutely. And if you if you'd done more thalo, we might have thought Hawaii. You know, so this could be somewhere d down. Wh where do you think? So closer oh, this to, could uh, be anywhere. Could be anywhere, but it's probably more. You know, it's a, it's a feeling of a more of a summer day, doesn't it? Mm. You know, more some kind of more of a summer ocean color. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from Marina. I, Daniel, one door closes and many more will open for you. Oh, that is true. And I, I, you know, I'm having a good summer. Carol, we'd like to thank you for your donation. Thanks, Daniel, for sharing your art. Aww. Well, I, I'm, I'm excited about it too because there's so many different ways to paint something. 
and Daniel is a really, I think, you know, a, is, he's just probably um, one of our up-and-coming uh, genius artists for this uh, this generation. And um, oh, I thank anybody you, Ms. that wins one of his paintings is going to hang on to it because it's going to be worth a lot of money someday because the stuff already goes for big bucks when it sells. You yes, know, it does. That just does, right? Yes, it What's does. What's the most expensive you've ever gotten? What's the most money you've ever gotten for paintings? No one's going to ask you that, but I'm going to ask that. What's the most money you've ever gotten? Twelve. Twelve thousand? Yeah. Okay, you guys, there you have it. Um, and, the, and, you know, you keep in mind, you guys, that the gallery, if, if Daniel got twelve, the gallery doubled that. You know, so that's just what they paid the... People always say, well, I'll never give the gallery that, but they have to sit there and sell the artwork. So if... If Daniel got that for himself, then the painting went for double that. So just, just keep that in mind. A lot of times people understand when we do an auction, um, when we start our auction at, for my original paintings, um, uh, we, 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 we actually do it below wholesale. We start the, all, the, all the paintings below wholesale, which is, a, 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 you know, which is you know, kind of incredible. Well, we do that because, uh, for instance, um, year, some years ago I had a, 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 a giant show in, in Laguna Beach with about 40 paintings, and they flew them all out there, and they you know, trucked them all out to Laguna Beach, and there was a big show, and um, kind of a one-woman show in Laguna, and the agent got 25% um, of what I got, and the gallery got their 50%, so I ended up with 25% of the final sale of... Uh, I think the most expensive thing that went with two paintings went for uh, $25,000. So, um, you guys, when you're talking about professional artists and you know the stuff that you know the prices are paintings in in galleries command, I don't think people really understand how much they can go for. Absolutely. You know, but on, on the other hand, don't begrudge a gallery their money because that still painting could sit there for months. They have to pay the lights, the overhead, and if it's in an expensive location. Um, Jenny Decent Galleries, and uh, they, yeah. they, they, do, they, they earn their money, and they really do. They earn their pay. Uh, you know, if they're selling an artist's work, they're earning their money, and they're earning their percentages. And so artists should never begrudge the gallery, et cetera. Uh, and the thing about a gallery sale is you know you're getting an authentic piece of art. And that's, you know, if someone's going to spend thousands of dollars on a piece of art, you want to know that it's authentic. And that's part of the job of the, the, the gallery as well, is to make sure that they're providing legitimate artwork. So That's, that's true. You know, and, uh, so, so one, one time uh, uh, we had a, um, some people were down the road in a truck selling artwork. And uh, my ex-husband said, uh, there's these guys down there and they've got copies of your artwork and they're selling it on the side of the road. These are oil paintings. And I'm thinking, you know, he wouldn't recognize a copy of yep. my artwork and I'll line up, you know, we'll see. You know, yep. but I got in the car and went down there. And sure enough, not just my artwork, but uh, some of the major, my eight major artist friends, they were all just knocking them off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, you know, we just told them in no certain terms that this stuff's all copyrighted. And uh, of course, not that you can do anything about it. This is all made overseas and they were just selling it. But um, happens all the time. It happens all the time, right? So if you, you, um, you know, though, though um, they, they had the image, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the colors, you know. They, no. They, they really, you know, they took the image. What can you do? You can't. So that's, that's the thing, you know. That's why as artists, you always want to sign your paintings, too. Absolutely. I sign signature. everything. You sign everything, right? Your painting's worth a lot. I sign my tissues. I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> awful. <laughs> you know, you never know. You never know. Uh, you know, that... That mess that came out when I had a head cold was really interesting sometimes, those shapes. So, you know, I, I will sign everything. <laughs> You're just... Oh, what was it? Uh, yeah. We were laughing the other day. I was talking to my friend Liz, and we were talking about um, water fountains. And, you know, I said, the nice thing about having a little fountain in the house is it, 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 it brings the, right. you know, nature in, but sometimes it sounds like a, a, yeah. a toilet running, right? Yep. And, and her husband had told her one time when she wanted a fountain, he says, if you need a water feature, I'll just go in the bathroom and flush the toilet three times. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, okay, I get it. It's just, yeah, something fun. Oh, I'm liking the palette knife work. Are you guys, uh, aren't you loving that? Don't you love this little bit of light here on the water? Very subtle on the, on the little ocean rocks and so forth that he's got going here. 
Oh, it really looks good, doesn't it? Someone has asked if the lighthouse is a reality lighthouse, not something that you know of, or one that's from your little brain. Oh no, I, I make this crap up all the time. I don't <laughs> I, I don't I don't look at references. <laughs> Okay, this, this is not the person to be following. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> this is not what we teach here. Bad, no, bad. no, I make oh, it all no. up. Um, it's really a lot. I used here and there. A reference is important. That's why I actually take like portrait workshops. I don't make people up. But uh, if I'm going to do something where I'm going to teach you something very simple and straightforward in a short period of time. No, I'm going to make up something. Because uh, if not, I was going to have to sort through thousands of photos until I found one that would be easy enough to convert. I ain't going to work. So, uh, so yeah. So talk to us about light sources and what you're doing here. Oh, all right. Light sources. I am currently making that up uh, because I, I can. Because guess what? I have an artistic license <laughs> issued years ago. <laughs> Uh, and so right now I just thought this needed to be on some cliffs so I made some darks and to be honest sometimes as artists we make really great choices and other times we regret some of our choices and I should have added at least one more color to my palette you want it we get it oh we it's it, oh it's right here it's a and I might actually do that because I realized that my palette, although it's very simple, is is lacking something. And so I'm going to grab some magenta and throw that in, and then we'll Ooh. see. Ooh, you guys, hey, we'd like yeah. to thank Eric for the donation. After the show, take Daniel out for a big, fat, hot fudge sundae. Oh, oh yes. Thank you. Yes. Wise, yes. Wise man, wise man. Yes. Yeah. Daniel, how do you feel about soft body paints? Soft-bodied paints are awesome when you're working without a knife. Uh, I do a lot of knife work, and so I prefer the, the heavier body. It just feels better. It's a little easier to manipulate. And so I, I would sit more towards, lean more towards uh, the heavy body. But for those that like no brush stroke or limited brush stroke, that's perfect. It's I mean, soft body paints are equally pigmented. So you're talking about something like these yep. golden ones here, yep. like the golden... Um... The fluid acrylics. Uh, then they make their high flow acrylics. And uh, there are wonderful applications for both. And you have a paint for every need. You got it. I'd like so, to go through uh, some of the donations, people's recognitions, if we could. Sure, that'd be sure. Nice. Kathy, thank you very much for the donation. These are people that paid through the PayPal system. Oh. Kathy. Uh, Linda, thank you very much. Oh, look at that. Michael or Michelle. You know, we always do that with that word, don't we? I, I, I call Michael. He, we have a, a Michael in the... Um, in our academy, and I'm always calling him Michelle in the art critique, oh, so then boy. I have to go back and say, I'm sorry, I called you the wrong name of the video, but I'm feeling very dyslexic today, I'm so sorry, it's Michael, because we have like four Michelles and one Michael, right? Yeah. Giovanna? Oh. Giovanna? Giovanna, yeah. Uh, Alice? Okay. For Daniel, good luck, and thanks for sharing your painting skills with us. Carol? Oh. Thank you, Carol. Marty? These are all so sweet. Wow. All right. So what should I do next? What do you think, Ginger? I don't know. I'm just, I'm I probably... Um, um, from An Andrew, for Daniel, the three of you together are a wealth of information and a thank you to all. Uh, Daniel lives in, uh, my, uh, Andrew lives in Haiti. Oh, really? Uh-huh. He lives in Haiti. He has a business in Haiti. He's, he's from the states, but he lives in he lives in Haiti. He, um, he travels the college, world, and he travels the world. And uh, oh, uh, we've cool. actually stopped in Haiti two times and given him art lessons. Oh, we were going to do it a third time, but um, uh, they they had a little unrest and so forth Aww. in Haiti, and it wasn't possible for him to get where our ship was. Aww. You know, it's not uh, easy. So it's just interesting. Um. um. Sanitorious, I their website. 
Thank you. I never know how to say your name. I wish you had your real name there. Thea, thank you very much for the donation. Valerie. Tint. Uh, for Daniel, thanks, Ginger and John, for having him on YouTube. Super show. Oh, I love it. Jennifer, I thanks for teaching with Jennifer. For, with, thanks for teaching with Ginger and John. Oh, This is so much fun, y'all. Thank you. Uh, I, I, Michelle, I, I love coming on. Best of luck, Daniel. My thoughts are, are with you. Jeffrey, thank you. That would be Tanya. I can go by the last name. Christian, Christine, Christine, Kristen, Kristen. Thank you. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Let me see one of these Renee. tub of towels. That was not meant to go there. Make a good cloud. Yeah, it will. Look at that. Yeah, let me get a little bit more. You're making me boo boos over there. Of course. We have smaller we all palette do. knives. You want oh, one? I know. One your right. That would just right. that that would just be too easy, though. Come on, I got to do things the hard way, Miss okay. Changer. All right, fine. <laughs> but that, that is a southern thing, Miss Ginger. I'm telling you what, in in, yeah. in um, Washington State, nobody calls anybody Miss anybody. It's uh, just hey you, right, kind of thing. It's always so funny to me. I came to the south and there's Miss Ginger, and the and the neighbor kids are always so always so supply, supply oh, yeah. too, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's how I raised my boys. It's uh, one of the things I liked about the south when I got here, was uh, kids calling me Mr. Dan or. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Dan, and you know, I, I just think that it's it's a way of being casual and polite at the same time. Uh, that's nice, isn't it? You guys, yeah. casual and polite. That's that's kind of cool. Way cool. We'd like to thank Jennifer from the YouTube system for her donation. Claudia, back to the PayPal. Thank you for your donation. And we have Jesse. Thank you. Madonna, thanks, Ginger and Daniel. Just a little something to help out. Love your paintings and tutorials. Oh, well, shoot. I wish I had two hands running. Then we could be giving away a whole bunch more for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joyce, thank you for your donation as well. You guys, this is really awesome. Thank you, thank you very much. Because, I mean, uh, uh, you guys are wonderful, Marina? really. Thank you for your donation. Deborah, coming to the end. Renee, thank you, Daniel, for your teaching. Thank you, Ginger and John, for doing this, for doing this for us and for Daniel. In today's world, you are a true blessing. And Robin, thank you. And if I missed you, I apologize. I'm reading on an iPad, but I think I got everybody. And thank you, everybody bunch of crazy marks over here and then I'm going to go back over them with some darks I love how he builds up his painting you know, don't you guys love this? I mean, you think it's really great um, because you know, no two people paint the same ever paint the same way right? and so to see how somebody else is doing it I think it's just way cool yeah, I bounce around a lot and it's uh, my attention deficit disorder when, while I'm painting. Uh, I notice one spot, I focus on it too long, then I go, oh no, this part looks awful. So then I start working on that, and then I just keep going around in circles. And as long as you keep those things in mind and don't forget all the rest of your painting, you're, you'll be good. Yeah. But now, when you're doing an oil painting, you can come back. How many days can you come back and work on an Depending oil painting? Depending on the colors, it can be four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you can come back and still, and still wake it up and still work. Uh, so. Absolutely. Uh, oh, it never sleeps. An oil painting never sleeps. Uh, Acrylics are, are for people. Very who, different. Yeah, very different. Kind of make those decisions, you know. And honestly, for years and years and years, it suited me more than anything else. But... You've There's had something making, about you've had some making your own. Paint yeah, too, too. you know, making your own acrylics is fun too. But it's, mm, I prefer doing my oils, uh, and 
again, there's nothing against uh, acrylics. Good acrylics, you could make as beautiful an artwork. I mean, there's really no difference. Um, there's really no functional difference other than time. And, uh, you know, I can walk away from a painting for an hour and come back, and it's exactly the way I left it. I can walk away from my palette, and it's exactly the way I left it. And nothing has dried out, and nothing has uh, changed. And so those are things that... I don't know, the way my life has changed over the years, it, it really works for well, me. Well, particularly but. when you were a manager at the store. You yeah. Would, Janet used to paint in the store, but then you'd have to get up and talk to customers, and you know, sometimes that would involve two or three hours or something, or mm -hmm. a big ship would come in, you have to unload boxes, and mm -hmm. maybe wouldn't get back to that painting for two or three days, but it would still sit there. And people used to come in and just watch and paint things, and of course you'd have classes at that point too. Yep. Until they um, kind of put a quash on all that stuff, but yeah. there were some classes. There were lots happens. of demonstrations. Lots of demos and stuff, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I always enjoy the demos that the different paint companies do. Um, myself you know just when they're oh yeah well that's you learn by watching others do and listening to others i you know i used to i used to stalk ginger's class every time ginger would be teaching a, a you know yeah, anytime uh anytime miss ginger would be speaking uh about something in general i'd always find a reason to be hanging out near the area because we all learn from each other, and, you know, Ginger is a master painter, and I'm going to learn as much as I can by listening. And, you know, I may not practice everything the same exact way. Um, I may not approach things the same way, but knowing how other artists approach it is huge. It's, it's uh, every new approach is, is, a, is a good approach. No. A lot, yeah, there's absolutely a lot of different ways. So what else you got for us, John, for questions? Uh, Jazz says, sorry, but what is the color combo for the teal again? Okay. Color combo on the teal. Um, I'm doing one of two different things. <laughs> um, one is going to be the antique white, burnt umber, and phthalo blue. And the other is the phthalo blue and the Naples yellow which is around here somewhere. Ah, there, Naples yellow, okay. Can the unbleached titanium be made? Can unbleached titanium be made? Um, you can get pretty close to it. I mean, it's a, it's red iron oxide with titanium white and um, a Hansa yellow, I think. I think it's Hansa. Would that be in that nifty yep. book? Pigment Yellow 42. It's either Hansa or Aerolite, I forget. So that's in that nifty book yeah. we talked about earlier. For those of sock folders of you that like looking things up. <laughs> yeah. just, Which you apparently know, is you know, not you her. Can, you know, anymore if you can't ask Google. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Google it's, doesn't know. It isn't worth knowing, it's, right? It's not important. It's just not important. Yes. Uh, Alexa doesn't know anything. But um, Google knows some stuff, right? Yeah, Google is really, really Smart good at helping you find what you're looking for. So, uh, you know, someday, maybe in 10 years, you could just ask Google, and they'll, they'll know that, too. Right now, they, they're still working on, you know, things, but still, Google knows a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I love these colors of how you just keep playing with the colors. Don't you guys well, love that? I think this is so fun. Hope well, you guys this is where color saturation show. comes from, is multiple layers, and... That's uh, for the person who was questioning earlier about the, the amount of water and uh, versus, you know, how do you keep your paints from being chalky? This will not be chalky when I'm done. It won't and be close to chalky. There's so much paint on it now. Well, just wait. I'm still, I'm still, still chunking up. it up. I'm still chunking it up, but I'm getting there. Is the angle of the sky following a plane to a vanishing point on the right side of the canvas? Um, over here? Yeah. No, I just, that's just as far as I've gotten. Uh, it'll it, be something eventually. You're there, will be some, there will be some clouds up in the sky. I haven't gotten around to my clouds yet. All right, this is fun, you guys. I've been I geeking, hope in, I've been geeking a little bit on some in, of this. I hope you guys are in for the long haul on this tonight because we're going to take our time with this painting uh, oh. because it's going to go up in the auction. I want you to hurry. I want you to take your time with this painting um, and the other thing because I think that that's, I think this is, this is the kind of show that's really worth watching when you get someone that's doing this. And I think uh, spontaneous... Did I lose what, time again? No, it doesn't matter. Don't, okay. don't concern yourself. I'm just letting everybody know that, uh, you know... Um, We've only been on an hour. Oh, really? That's oh, okay. it. 
Time flies when you're having fun, oh, yeah. isn't it? Time flies. You know, this looks, this, well, like oh, this light I don't know what you, are, are we getting ready to sign off or something? Did, 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 no, did I miss no, no, a memo no, or I, something? No, no, I just no, 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 just, I, th I lost track of track, I, as I do often, and sometimes I fall behind, so I just like to make you're, sure you're not, I stay on time. You're not, you're not, you haven't fall behind, I just okay, want everybody to know. There is no behind. Here. There's no behind. We're, we're here till we're not. How's that, you guys? Yeah, there you go. We haven't put a time schedule on this. We don't have my daughter, uh. You know, following coming us, up, following us, us with, 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 with swear to be off by two o'clock on Sundays. Hey, next Sunday, incidentally, um, we're not going to be doing a live show or next Monday, but we will probably, if all possible, do one Saturday. Okay. But we don't know yet. But we don't know yet. But we will have a our pre-recorded shows will be up. Best thing to do is be subscribed and make sure the alarm is turned on because you never know what we're up to. You know that's our that's our plan right now. Is it not, not? And then the following Sunday will be live, but uh, it, none in the afternoon will be live. Probably. Um, Usually we shift to Tuesday. We're not doing that. No, no, we're gonna. But we'll be there. We'll be um, Sunday. We'll be there. We'll just probably not at noon. Well, we could do a noon thing, but I don't think we're gonna. I think we'll probably be live in the evening, probably 7:30 or something on Sunday. And, and Monday, a week from Monday, we'll be live also. So no worries, you guys. We're, you know, we do the live shows when we can. We're going to see if we can't, um, uh, you know, facilitate some uh, some new things on our website. We're going to be showing you some stuff that we're doing while Daniel's painting that. Our, every week, for those of you who are kind of new to our channel, John and I have an acrylic painting uh, academy, and every week our members um, get... A new painting and sometimes it's a one cookie very simple sometimes it's a two cookie sometimes it's a box of cookies but during the month we try to make an average of at least one a very simple painting one more elaborate something really elaborate and so forth and different different subjects too if we do a if we do a landscape then i'll throw in an animal or um you know something like that right and i think i may have showed this to you but this week i'm going to just put this right here if i can real quick oh, sure this is what we're going to be Doing for our wave uh, for our, our uh, video lesson library. This is a, on a 10 by a 20 canvas, and it's um, the fall vineyard, and that's for our academy members. And if you want to just try us out for a week, you can do that for as little as nine dollars and ninety-five cents, and that gives you access to all 360 lessons um, of in our video lesson library. And you can sit there all day long and just paint like crazy. Or just pick one or two, or don't just pick one. It doesn't matter. You know? We don't care. We don't care. Just do whatever you want. You've got access. It gives you the codes, right? Yep. Hey, we'd like to thank Sandy for the donation. Thank you for sharing your talent. Love learning from you, Ginger and John. And oh. also, we'd like to thank uh, Daphne for her donation. Gosh, this is really great, you guys. We all appreciate it very much. Absolutely. That's, that's really, you can't know how much that's going to help. How's your tooth, by the way? It is good. It is better. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, this... Right around this whole time, everything started going south. I, I broke a tooth. That was, uh, that was a little insult to injury right there. Yeah, and your car broke, right? Yes, it did. The next day, his car yep. broke. Uh, it was uh, <clears throat> an entire year's worth of uh, the kind of crap you deal with in life all happened in about a one-week span. Yeah, oh, I'm it's good to get out of the way. I'm surprised you just managed to get out of bed after. You oh, got, I was listening to that, going, "Oh my gosh!" Right? Yeah, no, it, it it was actually becoming like a comedy routine after a while. I mean, it was just every time I turned around, it was like, "Oh, really, really?" <laughs> but my AC didn't go out, so I'm happy about that. So That's good. you know, That's you got to count your blessings. This was kind of a warm summer. Yeah, it's been a warm summer, right? Just a little bit. We had a really good lightning storm last did, did you have that too? You live pretty close yeah, to me, don't you? Yeah, I live you? right down the street, just about. I thought so. It's so funny. I, I thought yeah. so. You live really close. We had a lightning storm the other day that was uh, too scary. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, just about everything was knocked out for the whole area, actually. Lost. Uh, I lost power. I don't know about you. No, we didn't nope. lose power. Oh, I did. And just about all the street lights between, uh, all the stoplights between here and you, uh, or my house and your house. Really? All out, blinking. Wow. Well, I just, uh, it felt like a, a, it hit a tree. We have these tall pine trees. People think of Texas as a desert, but we live in a very green area. It's flat, but it's very green and it rains a lot. And it's, it really reminds me a lot of my home state, what, Seattle, in yeah. Washington State, except it's flat. There's all these pine trees and everybody has lawns and grass. And 
Um, and this has been one of those summers where it's been very rainy. And uh, we had these tall, tall, giant pine trees, really huge, like three, four story tall pine trees in the neighborhood. And lightning hits one of those and it makes a noise. Huh. Oh, it sure does. Yeah, it really does. All right, so what else you got, John, for us for questions? Can you make antique white with other whites? Titanium and yellow. Like can Just yellow medium? All. That is going to be pigment yellow 42. It's going to be a little, it's going to be similar. It's going to be similar, actually, to uh to uh cad medium just just a hint of it almost uh for those that have ever had a martini it would be an insanely dry martini uh uh the yellow would be your vermouth there you go sorry you get drinking an allergy uh, okay, used to bartend so went, don't know. yeah you i used, used to, to bartend? bartend yeah i did uh, I used to bartend in college so bas uh, basically when i think I of you mixing were a cute bartender in college I'm sure that that, <laughs> yeah i'm sure you did really oh look at those great clouds going in you guys look at that isn't that just super awesome okay gotta pay attention look at that all right so all right so the answer to that is white and yellow yeah it's basically just it, it, it's probably about 95 percent 98 percent white with just a hint just the tiniest little hint of a yellow. Now, I want you to know that you notice he keeps talking about pigment numbers, right? Pig number this, pigment number that. You see that, you know, this is the, this is the sock folder in Daniel with yep. that stuff, right? It's like, for instance, this says um, PY, this says PY uh, 53. 53, right? Yep. But this one says, that's pigment number, in case you didn't know. This one says PY 42. This is antique white. So if you want to know more about that, that's the book to get. This um, I'm going to throw this up here. Yep. Here, your artist handbook. And um, right a little bit to the right, please. You have to put it over the painting. I put, Either over the painting yeah. or over the palette. <laughs> here. My, well, this is left for me. All right. So well, here, here, here. It's, sometimes it's left for you. I, I guess that's true. I just put. Look at this. Do you like it? I'll awesome. Fix that. All right, so, so like yeah, this to is keep the artist's you away handbook, from fifth edition. I mean, if you like all these number things that Daniel's doing, and you want to be up on, you want to be in the what they call in the know about stuff like that, right? Then you, you, the you know. you'll sound. Um, you'll, I, I'll tell you what: you walk into an art gallery, and you have all this information. You'll sound very educated, you know. Well, I just, this is the, these paintings are all done with the with the X Y Z pigment numbers, and that these are very expensive pigments. Blah blah blah. I mean, you could really just have a fine time. Uh, as I <laughs> showing off my your hands, stuff, right? Showing off your um, your knowledge and just intimidate the heck out of them, right? No, you must know a lot because you've got all those pigment numbers. It's like people using big words. It's really yeah. impressive, isn't it? Well, you know, after working with the public for a very, 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 very long time, um, I'm. It's really important for being specific and. You have to read the tube of paint and know what you're getting into. Uh, just knowing little things about them. This one right here, PG7, pigment green number seven, that's phthalo. It's going to be transparent and high staining. Uh, I mean, just about any one of the paints that you pull up, if you know the number, you know what it's going to do. And so you, they could call it whatever they want. But it doesn't you really know matter. If, if they have that chemical number on there, you know what's in it. You know what it's going to do. Okay, so, for instance, in that book would say this will be a transparent or very staining thing, yep. right? That book tells you that, right? tells you what the tinting power is, and uh, it'll tell you whether it's normally transparent or whether it's opaque. And uh, in oils, some colors dry faster than others, uh, so that's uh, that would be something. Um, with acrylic, it also, you know, there's, there's a lot of information in those books. Uh, and for most people, you don't, you can paint just fine without ever knowing. Uh, it took me about 20 some odd years before I realized that, hey, that could be valuable information. Well, there you go, right? And you know, I love this darker sky here that you've got. Bringing that, you know, the darker sky, the darker color brings your eye back toward the, um, the, the lighthouse. You guys seeing that, how that works? I mean, I think that's interesting. I mean, I really yeah. do. I mean, it just, um, uh, and, and of course, people have all kinds of questions because sometimes I think you got them at the store yeah. where somebody was using a brand of paint. And uh, it went out of business, and they couldn't find that color anymore. Exactly. And, and that book has that this has that brand and the other colors that uh, and other brands. It cross references it's, brands. Right. It it, it 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 it'll tell you what the common names have been for a particular color. And so, 
you can find out an awful lot of information that way um, just by whittling it down to its chemical numbers because they're, they're required. They've got to have those listed. Interesting. Okay, so what else? That was good because particularly, you know, we have a lot of viewers that are watching us from Europe and Australia and mm -hmm. um, maybe um, India, places like that, and they don't have Liquitex or they don't have some of these other paints. Right. And so then they, if they had that book, they could then take a look take and, and see, see what what would what work they're in calling that. that color. You got it. Yeah, they're calling that color. So that's. We've never talked about that book before, yeah. have we? Never nope. on the show. This is like a new thing, you guys. We've never talked about that book. Um, I'll make sure that we have it in our, our, our links on Pinterest. You know, John and I have, a um, uh, thanks to Judy Guitar, have revamped our Pinterest boards. Yeah, Jen, yeah, yeah. Ginger and I did that all. We didn't. No, Judy did it all, but she, but <laughs> the she way did you it. Worded but, it. You know, uh, no, no. We, the Dow got revamped because of Judy Guitar, and one of the things that Judy did for us was that she... Um, we used to say, look, I, I like this book or I like this or that. So she went ahead and figured out how we could then put the links from um, wherever we found that stuff um, on the page and and also... Um, it's a great reference resource. It's a great reference resource. So, for instance, I've got a book on painting design I really like, and it's on there, but also you can hit the link and it'll take you right to where you can get it. And um, sometimes it's just... Uh, those things are very convenient. And you guys, you know, Daniel's going to be doing a 10-minute painting at the end here when he finishes with this. And, and then again, of course, we're going to have this raffle. What's our secret word going to be, John? Pick me. Pick me. That's going to be the secret hmm. word. And he's going to open that up soon, the, the raffle, uh, you know, the drawing, just for the people that are watching this live. And But this painting here will be available uh, in a real uh, uh, money kind of auction in our... Uh, Ginger Cook Auction on Demand. No, Not Ginger even. Cook, gingercookauction.com. Sorry, gingercookauction.com, where our fall <laughs> auction is now um, underway. All right, we have any paintings that we, have we put up there for original? We have 64 paintings 64 and four paintings. puzzles currently. And how many puzzles? Four. Four puzzles. We're getting down to the very last of our puzzles. I'm not even keeping any for me. Um, while he's doing that, I'm going to show you a quick picture right here. Here's good. Can you see that? And this is a little six. A this is go. a little six by eight. It's the Monet poplar trees. This is one of the lessons we had, and it's all tiny little brush strokes. And if you guys want to, you know, this is one of the ones. I really like this one because it shows a different style of painting. So that's one of the ones we're showing. Uh, one of my favorites, and we already have a few bids on this one, you guys, is, um, see, I like anything that says what we are and who we are and what we do, right? I think this goes like this. Here, yeah, there's my signature. Here's our little paint box with the watercolor box, the pencil, and the brush, right? That's one of our little, that's one of our paintings that we have in our auction. Um, and some time ago on YouTube, um, I guess a couple years ago, I showed you guys how to create an abstract that had, that was more of a figurative abstract and put in your own objects that said something about yourself. And they all pretty much contained this a guitar. Here's the original. If you want to see what other people have done, um, Go to our Pinterest page, and I just I have this a uh, whole all I don't know, probably 20 different uh, paintings that, that different people have done based off this tutorial, which is also on YouTube if you ever want to paint this yourself. This is one of the originals that we're having in our auction. So moving on, I see you're adding some light to the clouds. That yeah. looks look great. That looks absolutely Spe great. Speaking of the 10-minute uh, painting from last time, we had Goldie right in. She was the winner of it, or the recipient of it. Daniel, I, I was unbelievably fortunate. Your 10-minute painting winner on your last appearance, I am so appreciative. Aww. I haven't been able to thank you until now. So thank you. Well, Landed in the hospital. Welcome. Thank you. You're very, very, very welcome. That's, I, I would give them all away if I could actually just be independently wealthy and not have to. Oh, yeah, know? we would all love to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you won the lottery, you know, yeah, and just had a couple billion dollars, you just give, pay, oh, give them away, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I paint because I have to. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of born having to do this. So yeah. uh, for those of us that, that, that do, it just takes up too much time. You know, I, uh, if, I, if I didn't have to make a living out of it, I, wouldn't, I, would, I would just paint all day every day. Well, make you're, people happy. You're, 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 you're single, right? Yes, I am. There you go. So, <laughs> she's single, right? Maybe you can find a a, a patron out there. <laughs> uh, 
Are you trying to pimp me out, Miss Ginger? <laughs> Absolutely, wouldn't dream of it, right? Wouldn't dream of it. So I, there, there, I, I certainly, uh, I, I know some stories, right? I know some stories about other guy artists that I know, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I just really know. I know some stories that have been very, very successful. Well, for instance, Van Gogh. Obviously, how did he paint all the time? His brother paid for his, uh, you know, paid for him to be able to uh, um, uh, to paint. He he would write his brother every day, and um, and he had sketches yep. of what he was doing, and he he painted like a crazy person for about ten years. And one of the reasons they thought now, no, he didn't commit suicide, but one of the reasons they thought he might have was his brother got married and had a kid and he was afraid he wouldn't be able to afford to on his uh, salary that he made as an art dealer to uh, sponsor him and also give his child the life that he felt right. that his nephew uh, deserved so um you know i mean there's historical precedent for it how's that yeah you know, oh no absolutely historical precedent for it you know come move to a desert island and paint right <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Although I'd prefer it to be Maui. You want to you want to live on Maui oh, and paint, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. That would be your ideal situation. Yep. Okay. How many viewers you got in Maui right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, this, less than I'm staying room. at their house <laughs> with this big spare room, right? I'm gonna stay at their house. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll give art lessons for a place to stay, right? Exactly. <laughs> what is your favorite subject to paint? Um, I guess I'll say landscape at the moment because I've been having a lot of fun doing that for, for the last few years, but it's whatever crap comes out of my head. I, I keep saying the C word, but you know, I, I just make a bunch of, I feel like painting and I make marks and those marks either look like something or they don't. It's, uh, do you paint with music? Yes. What kind of music? A little bit of everything. I have very weird eclectic mixes that I, that I, that I paint with. Um, so it'll go everything from like New Orleans jazz all the way through almost metal to, I mean, really? literally uh, just about every genre is covered. It's, it's, it's really weird and it only makes sense if, uh, someone is there with me painting and, and actually here's my playlist while they're painting. Eventually they get it and they go. Oddly, these things make sense. Because if you were just to hear my playlist, you'd be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Okay. Well, I, mean, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't paint with any music at all. Sometimes I'll paint with an audio book running in the background. Mm. Okay? I'll, I'll do that, but I don't paint with any music. Though I have found that, that if I'm painting with them, one time somebody asked me to, uh, well, actually I kind of volunteered, but I did this cool mu mural uh, in this uh, in this re restaurant on all four walls, mm -hmm. and we were painting. Uh, I did it uh, like in record time, but they were pa painting, uh, playing Elvis Presley songs. Oh, very and cool! I, I, you know, I was painting so fast it was almost like I was plugged into something. Yep. Because right? you you have a tendency to paint with the music, don't you? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons for the eclectic playlist, and I I I have it just bounces from song and genre all over the place and the rhythms are similar but the tempos are different so it gives me some some areas in my playlists will be more calm and some will be a little bit more um upbeat and loud and yes i'm messing around with a smaller knife well, I'll tell you what, a good idea uh, <laughs> and i'll tell you what kid i'll tell you what if anybody wants daniel's playlist um uh, can, can, are you willing to share it oh it's crazy you're gonna be you're gonna be spending a lot of time searching. There's a lot of weird stuff in there. Okay, so if anybody wants to know about Daniel's playlist, I guess uh, can, can, he's I'll, got I'll a, you've got a, he's got a, he's got a, his own Facebook page. Yep. Don't you? Go yep. bug him. So go yeah, bug go Daniel bug about about it, and, and then bug remember me. he said he'd uh, mention it. So uh, oh, what yeah. his play, playlist was right. Oh, absolutely. I you know there's only about 700 songs on it. But well, well we must start with something. No, I have it on. I, I literally load. I, I've got about. I don't know. I'll find one of my small playlists. Okay. About, right. a, about, don't about, you, about don't eighty you think or ninety. Be fun? Eighty uh, or ninety pictures. Wow. But they they basically they all flow in and out of each other. Hmm. And I can start in any point, and then they'll go get somewhere. Pretty it's, much, you have music going all the time. Though. Do you wake up to music? No, I don't. Um, I wake up in that horrible panic of what am I late for. And 
regardless of what time it is, and then I realize, oh no, I'm not late for anything. And then I go to Starbucks. <laughs> so you're a Life Starbucks coffee fan. Oh, fanatic. I'm there nearly every single morning. They all know my name. Really? Yep. That's the local Starbucks down there by yep. Vintage Park? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm there every single morning. Really? Yep. Yeah. I go down there, I bring a sketchbook, I hang out, I have my morning coffee, I doodle. Um, that's pretty much... And that's I do that every day. You know, I try and... I'm trying to be good. People... I'm sure you've mentioned it before that journaling is good and drawing and practice and I've been doing a lot of that this uh, I'm trying to stick to it because I don't as I've said before I, I never really draw anything I just make it up and just do it and I've been drawing more well that's good yeah it's good it's good discipline Robin would like to know can Daniel explain more about saturation with layers Saturation with layers. All right. Well, the more paint you lay down, um, the m I guess it's really simple. I mean, the more paint that you're putting down, uh, the more saturated the color is going to appear. Um, light travels through all of the colors. So it doesn't just see the top. So if I put this color right here, uh, it just doesn't see that. It actually travels through it hits every single color on its way down to the solid surface, and then refracts all its way back. So what you're seeing is from basically the underneath through. Really? Even so, with yeah. classified as an opaque paint? Yep. So Light travels about, through what, all of it. What, what about if you painted on a black, uh, I'd say something that was gessoed uh, black, then maybe you start with the canvas, you gessoed mm -hmm. black, what happens? When a canvas is gessoed black or any other dark color, um, you're, it, it, it's going to bend the light. I sometimes paint on a metallic gold gesso because it bends all the layers and doesn't matter how many layers of paint I put on it all of the colors appear just a, a slight bit different wow that's interesting you know see we all learn something new right that's mm -hmm. good so what is your favorite uh, uh, gold gesso it's made by Daniel Smith okay and I absolutely adore it and if I could find my other I've got a couple of uh, quarts of it and if I can find it I was going to bring it but I couldn't find it today Oh, now, we would have used now, it. I had heard that uh, that Holbein actually, you know, actually they make made one that that was actually kind of was even more superior to that one. I liked the Holbein. The Daniel Smith was my actual well, favorite. Well, we're asking and we're his opinion. Yeah, right? no, and, and someone just told me that today. Yeah, no, Holbein makes some of their gessos and their colored gessos are superior. Um, like I said, every. Every professional quality art material is a is exactly that a professional quality. Uh, and the art professional material. will have this preference. Yeah, uh, you know, and you know, I, I so make Daniel the joke. It's Coke makes acrylics good. too. What's that? D Daniel Smith makes acrylics. Not any longer. They no longer make acrylics. Nope. Just the gesso. Nope, they make the gesso still because of popular demand, and they they make watercolor and they make oils, but they they dropped their acrylics. That's interesting to know. See, I yeah. didn't know that is. I'm yeah. so behind the times. I had no idea. Yep. But good to know about the about the the gesso. Yeah. The and again the the, the metallic gold gesso, is. It's really just a, a good friend of mine turned me onto it, and I tried it. I ended up loving it. That's our, our 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 horse artist, right? Yep. That would be Miss Leslie. Leslie. Yeah. Horse artist Leslie. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did you get that pink? I mean, we're going way back in time now. The pink, I guess it's the pink you used down in the rocks. Which color are we talking about? That pink there. Oh, that pink right there? Yeah, I'm thinking that pink there at the top of the palette. Okay, pink at the top of the palette was the I'm Design Magenta along with the yellow, with the Naples yellow, and then I threw a little bit of the... The, the, the antique white and antique then white. a little bit of titanium and then this weird mix over here I tossed in as well <laughs> so in other words good luck getting it you know it's actually not it won't be that hard it's kind of a mauve gray mauve it, it, it gray is mob, and very subtle gray mauve it, it, there is a logic to it obviously this color plus these two are going to get you in the pinkies 
somewhere. And what is that color there that you're pointing to at the top that we can't see? Oh, oh. You we can't, can't see, see that? that one. What is oh, that Oh, okay. Oh, that would be the Naples. Okay, that's fine. Let's put some right Yeah, there. put some right there. So in order to make that color, here, I'll do it real quick. Let's see how close I come. Muscle memory, people. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. It's going to go very kind of... Peachy. Peachy orange. Nice color. Right. Very pretty color. Then I'm going to take some of this. But if you notice, it's very intense, right? Yeah. Sort of a circus color at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Very high chroma. It's a beautiful color, but really, really potent. Although you probably can't see that stripe. So... You hope we can see that stripe better. Basically, you take a little bit of the blue-green to neutralize it. And that'll gray it down. Then you add a little bit of white, and I've got a really muddy, dirty white because I'm... I've been bad. I haven't been mixing with the knife. I've been mixing with my brush today. I do it all the time. And so I'm trying really hard to, to keep it clean for everybody, but now this is... Uh, Don't worry about it. Okay. We got more paint. Okay. We got two to the Say, and I just place. took it to purple. Weird. What was my other ingredient? Uh huh. Ha <laughs> ha! You on. have to uh, go back. Hold you on. Probably just got so much blue in it. I think I got too much blue in it. That's exactly what it is. You probably just got too much blue, so you have to just see. What you do is you don't try to fix that. You come over and start again. You use yeah. some of that and the other color. So a lot of times, the reason people have trouble mixing colors is they get a color they don't want and they keep dumping into it rather than take some of it, move it over, and then start again. That's, that's my obsessive compulsive disorder right there. <laughs> my my OCD takes over. Yeah, but see, that's that's the color right there, yeah. pretty much right there. That's the color. Yeah, you're not red sort of light you've lost your color. red. So you just you just needed to lighten it up some. Yeah, yeah, it's close. Okay, there you go, there you, you go. guys. That's it. Close. That's sort of this uh, kind of a mauve, I think, kind of a soft. Yeah. A rose. It's like a soft rose, isn't it? Yeah. Antique rose color, maybe that would yeah. be a good. That good would be a, a really good way to describe it. Um, and that's. Uh, I'm constantly when I when I'm doing this, I, I do. I constantly take my my color mix, and if it's too bright, I take its opposite and I drop it in, and that's uh, to neutralize it. And sometimes I do it so quickly I don't remember what I did. But that's one of the reasons why I try and keep a limited palette. Okay, well, and, and also and you guys, when you make a color, you can always just write down how you made it. Just do it. Keep a little color journal. I always tell take yeah. a piece of paper next to you. And you're starting a painting, have a piece of paper for that painting, the title of the painting, and then kind of write step by step what you did. If you you could use a you could use your camera and mm -hmm. you know, take a picture of your palette as you mix it. You know, we've got so many tools that are so easy for us to use now. There's just uh, sometimes you'll need to come back and maybe fix the sky and it, and you can't remember how you did it or fix this color in the water. Well, write it down for a while. Until it becomes sec second nature to you, I'll write it down. All right, what oh, yeah. else you got for questions, John? I believe I'm done. Wow. If so, I haven't answered your asked your question, please ask it again because it, it was hard keeping track of them all. Mm. Uh, this is so much more solid than I ever paint. This is ridiculous. Well, what's the matter? Oh, no, I just... Uh, I, I usually would have uh, slashed this thing with knife mo knife strokes everywhere and said it looks like it looks close enough. It does it looks pretty good? I think I think you yeah. certainly you know you've got that. I think you're. You've I'm about to overpaint this, or if I haven't already. I think it's good. All right, we'll call it done. And uh, give me a nice small one. Give you want it just to. Um, Let's see what we got here. Let's turn it around here. Okay, here's a question. I don't know if I sure. understand it. Can you ask Daniel if he can use carbon dash neo colors? Carbon dash neo colors that are wax and oil based, but also a water soluble crayon be used under acrylics. Okay. Or only on, or only on top. I would suggest on top, um, the the Carindosh, uh, they're the neo colors are wonderful, um, but because they are waxy, 
there shouldn't be an interaction problem, but it possibly could. It could, it could, it could happen. So, I uh, personally, I would throw them on top if I was working with them. Daniel, will you please start a YouTube channel? <laughs> do you want to be my admin camera person and person that wakes me up and says, hey, it's time to do your show? Gee, that sounds like my job. <laughs> you know, for someone to do that, it really, it really is. There's a lot of work. It's a two-person thing. It's not just one person. People don't understand what it takes to do it. You, you, you it's channel. two person, a bear, a dog, and an elephant. That's right, you know. Um, we have a full staff. Though the one thing about it is, oh, I like that green color on those rocks. That's pretty. Yeah. That's really nice. It doesn't necessarily make any sense, but it. It does felt make like sense to me, and it, yeah. no, it did. It makes sense. It feels like the. Oh, I like that a lot. That's pretty. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, you, you you know, John and I did it together, and he lived in Michigan, and I lived here, so it's possible. But you need another person. So Dan, yeah. if Daniel was to do that, he'd need a, another person. How's that? Yeah, it, it would take a lot. It takes a, so somebody else would have to do it with him because it's just it's 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 a big. Someday you should do a tour of this whole place with the cameras and show them. Uh, well, I wouldn't believe it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we started, and the thing of it is, is that we, you know, we over time, and we started off with a three hundred and fifty dollar camera. Yep. And 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 a and a fifty dollar microphone, um, snowball microphone. And I just just aimed it down, and we just did our hands, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, filmed it and, and loaded it on on on, uh, on on YouTube. That's how we did it. So, you know, uh, it's gotten really involved since then. But I'm, I'm happy. I'm really happy to say that uh, uh, the results we've gotten have been terrific too. Yeah. Yeah. I just I like that. Daniel, do your boys paint? Do my boys paint? Yes, they both do. A little bit. They both should do more of it, but they're both actual musicians, so that's their their creative outlet is more geared towards uh, audio. Yeah, and they're both brilliant. What's their What's their instruments? Well, Colin plays guitar, bass, plus drums, some piano, and he's learning clarinet and pretty much just about anything um he gets his hands on and griffin taught himself how to p play piano last year and he has a knack for pretty much picking up anything he decides he wants to do but he went from zero to hero as far as a uh, piano player in the shortest period of time i've ever seen so uh he in less than a year is phenomenal wow so and he can sing. I don't know where he got that voice. Definitely not from me. So you're Dan not a Daniel, what palette knives do you use? What palette knives do I use? The ones that are around. I have lots of them. <laughs> um, Was they ever close at hand? It, pretty much. Uh, the shape I've been using the most of of late looks like this. You seem to be the most comfortable with that, as I see you flying around. The yeah, no, I, 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 I've been using this the most often. Um, but I have ones that are Creative Mark. I have ones from Blick. I have ones from uh, Liquitex. And I have ones that are Holbein. So the Holbein ones are my favorite. But I finally broke one after years and years and years. And so... I've been really hesitant because they're the most expensive. <laughs> well, they are my favorite. I, so. I've heard though that Holbein makes the very best palette. They, knife they on make the, the best palette knife on the planet, and I snapped one, and I'm surprised everyone didn't hear my my my, my shrieks it's of woe. Not, well, you know, you know, the Swiss. Have you ever seen the Swiss Army knife? Yes. You know, and have all those little things. You know, years ago in the Vietnam when the Vietnam War was on, my brother was over there over over there in Vietnam fighting in Vietnam, and um, so I didn't know what to send him for his birthday. So I sent him one of those, the most elaborate Swiss mm -hmm. knife you could get. And then fast forward to 1992, and he broke a blade, and he sent it back to the company, and they sent him a brand new knife. That's... And so I'm wondering yeah. if you couldn't just send that knife into a whole line, and if you wouldn't see another one show up. Well, maybe. I'm just asking. I'm just maybe. saying. I don't some, know. Some companies are like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, that was the kind of thing my brother would do. He bought a, um, 
Eddie Bauer, you know, was a, a company that really started in Seattle, and they make outdoor mm -hmm. camping equipment. Oh, yeah. And, the sporting, and he bought a parka, and then they guaranteed it for his lifetime. And he, yep. he wore it for like 40 years or something. And then he came in, and the zipper had broken. It was just had it. His, yep. And what he did was he, um, he, he's, he got another parka. And, yep. and, you know, his girlfriend was so horrified he would even get. He yeah. says, I didn't write the warranty, right? They yeah. said it was good for my lifetime. Now I'm still yep. breathing. The parka broke. Yep. So you don't, you don't know till you ask, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I sent back a pair of L.L. Bean shoes once that had no soles. <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly didn't expect them to be replaced, and they were. But I so think if you, wrote, you wrote him and said, I bought this in 1965, it's really served me well, I'm so sorry it broke. Any, any thoughts on this, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, they might just say, wow, you know, awesome. And, you know, and also they also might want to know why it broke. You don't know, these people, you know, take their knives very seriously. Oh, yeah, no. It's a uh, Japanese company. Well, it's, uh, it broke because, well, it was well used. There you go, right? All right, so we've learned, in, in summary today, we've learned a little bit about two-point perspective. We're also going to do a 10-minute giveaway here as soon as he, uh, and you feel free to keep playing with that. I understand yeah. you want to put a little shadow on the lighthouse, and you're, you're not in any kind of rush. We're, you have a captive audience because they're waiting for the free painting, so you can do, <laughs> you spend another 30 minutes on this and uh, throw in a little tide and some ocean. If you want uh, to put in a wave or two, feel free. They don't care. Jane would like to know, are golden open paints like oil paints in drying time? How long will they take to dry? Okay. Golden open paints. Um, well, as far as acrylics go, they would be the closest thing to an oil paint. Um, I have... Uh, I like them. But, I, again, they, they don't stay open nearly as long as a real oil paint. Not in my experience. So, um, but if you want a paint that's going to stay open longer, that's the one you want to use. Now, it, you know, um, Cinnamon said she's had some pretty good success yep. uh, using the golden open titanium white and mixing it with the other colors. Yep, that's how I did it most of the time. All right, you guys hear that? The golden open, use the titanium white in that, add it to your other colors. And, um, in fact, we have a tube of it lying around here somewhere, don't we, John? Yep. We can show people. Uh, I think it was over there on that desk. Um, you can do that. You can add it to your other paints, and um, it'll. Uh, particularly, you guys. We have people that are living in Australia in areas where the climate is so hot. Maybe Arizona, uh, mm -hmm. where uh, it gets very hot. Um, sometimes, even when the heater's on in the winter, so mm -hmm. cold, your house is warm. Anyway, your paints are drying faster than whatever reason they're drying faster than you want. And this is something that uh, you can. Yeah. Uh, you you know that's a solution. Just one of many solutions. Yeah. Uh, you absolutely can use the, the open. Uh, I don't have anything against it, but when I moved over to oils, I, the only thing I don't like about oils is their open time. So uh, okay, So this is what a tube of golden open would yep. look like, titanium white. All right. And um, again, this is something that's acrylic, something you can add to your other paints. Isn't it? Golden doesn't pay us to say this. We buy all this stuff. You know, nobody's just handing us free tubes of paint here. And once Daniel... Uh, you know, um, once I was no longer teaching at Jerry's, I no longer had access to any acrylics. Uh, the first year <laughs> I had my uh, our paint academy, I actually had access to acrylics, uh, which was really helpful. But uh, and after that, we had to start buying them. And one of the reasons, for instance, that I, um, uh, I so appreciate companies that that um, that 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 support us, for instance, in the sense that uh, you know you know give back. I you always hear me pl plugging a company called oh, yeah. the Brush Guys. And the reason I do that is because they give myself and all our viewers a 5% discount on, uh, they sell all kinds of brands of brushes. And they give you, if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, when you check out as a discount code, you get 5% uh, off on your total order. And they, and they mail all over the world, which is really key. Because for instance, yeah. uh, most of the you know, online stores that you see do not mail outside the United States. And they will ship brushes everywhere and often for a much better price than you can buy them in your own hometown. So again, I'm gonna plug them too, because I get, Absolutely. And, and because they give something back. I get 5% off, you get 5% off. I appreciate people that, that wanna help us, you know, give us a deal, and we'll talk about them too. Absolutely. I talk about the tub of towel people, uh, did that for, for you know, a good year before ever, but then they sent us a bunch of these little um, 
um, little package. We give these away uh, with our 10-minute giveaway. Is a, mm -hmm. uh, and they sent me a tub of towels thing. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's something. You know, they, at least they said, hey, thank you. Oh, and yeah. We had a gal in Canada say she found these at her local... Um, Home Depot, please. Home Depot. Uh, asked, you can now get these in Canada. So, um, so what, what did we have a run on recently? Holbein paint. Um, Holbein yeah. paint is, uh, we've been talking about that because we've been loving that and doing mm -hmm. a bunch with it. Yeah, Dick, Dick Blick, Blick is, is now out of it. <laughs> yep. now everything's on back order because we mentioned it. Yep. I, I don't think these companies understand that uh, when you're on a, a, a public place like YouTube and somebody mentions something they like, other people want to hear it too. I'm in the same way. If this, the makeup girls are talking about, you know, how to do makeup, you're over 50 or something, and they've got some nifty thing. I mean, I'm. Where did they get that? Oh, maybe that would work. You know, <laughs> something. Oh yeah. Right? I don't um, know. We're all like that. We, we're I'm all always consumers. up for makeup tips. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I know you would be right. Just, just what can you do, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, a little blush here and there. Right? We all like to feel pretty sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's right. So, you know. So, what, what about you? What do you look at it on on YouTube for stuff that that? Uh, are you a big YouTube? Uh, you look at then mechanical things or? How to fix your car? Fix I, the pretty much everything that's a how-to. If I need to do something and I'm not 100% sure, I go to YouTube and I just type how to whatever. And I watch those videos like crazy. And see if it's something you still want to do if you watch it. Yep. Figure out, is this a, I'm going to do it or am I going to call somebody? <laughs> yeah. Your hair dryer is right there if you want to oh. dry anything and put yeah. anything and you're good, right? Oh, I'm good. Don't you guys love this? I mean, I think it's well worth letting him do the little finishing touches on his lighthouse. I mean, this reminds me of maybe Portugal or um, I think I've, I've already been transported to another country. Ooh. This is way cool. Oh, well, thank you. I Dan love this. this Daniel, have you, have you tried the heavy body with the super heavy gel for oil painting effects? Yes. And uh, again, as far as effects go, you can make acrylics look like anything. Acrylics are a, a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful medium. Um, and you can make them appear as though they are oil-like. Uh, but actually getting the same saturation with the same amount, I, I just still i I'm, I'm i'm an oil painter i you know i love <laughs> acrylics but i'm an oil painter so uh i'm gonna so always you're not go gonna back convince them to, to change well you know i 25 years of acrylics i i kind of i still love them but they're they're no longer my first love that's okay and we understand yeah. that some of us still like it. i've been doing it for 50 and i still love them yeah and i was you know doing them when nobody knew anything about them yep and um you know started out you know uh, trying them out and and have been using them ever since yeah. so uh let's see i think we're, this is awesome you guys don't you think this is absolutely awesome so again we're going to put this in our regular um auction gingercookauction.com john will take a picture of this this will be available um, for, for bidding on the auction, will close. And what, when are we closing the auction? It's in September, be between the 15th and the 18th. Between the 15th and the 18th. So you want to check out this check painting. Each, each, we're going to start today. Right now, we're going to do another one with a, with a giveaway of a, a something here. I'm going to give Ooh, you a cool a canvas here. What can you do with that? What can I do with this? <laughs> oh, didn't we have? What can't I, I do with this? Yeah, you know what do you got for there? All right, that's our 10 minute. Uh, you know. There you go. Painting. Have fun. Like, all right. right. So yeah, there's your challenge, man. It's good to right. have fun with that, right? Oh, but just you wait. You get all the paints that you want, and we'll, Daniel's going to do something with that. Those kind of look like the colors you were using. So I just grabbed that. Um, let's see what Because it was here. there. Because it was there. I just this was serpentip, ser, serpent, ser, serendipitous. serendipitous. That's what the, this the was. The link is on the website on your page. Well, it will be up there shortly. It's online, so it'll be there mm -hmm. shortly. And the secret word is pick me. Okay, so someone's going to win this. Uh, ooh. Fun. So the, the clock is not actually ticking. Just have fun with this. There's just, uh, I don't want you to feel like you're under any kind of pressure here. The but clock is, is always ticking. Well, I guess so. Uh, well, that's true, John. I mean, that's it's, very astute of John. Uh, Isn't it? The clock's always how, ticking. How do you say it's not ticking? I don't understand this. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? <laughs> You always do this to me. <laughs> well, you just take things so literally, John. <laughs> yeah, but oh. you're the queen, and you tell me that whatever you say is 
is the way it is. It's like right. I mean, I saw that little sign that says to save save like you time can, and everything that you just assume that you know everything so i'm assuming you know everything but that's right Th that's right so yeah, when you say keep, that, keep assuming that that's always good to so know, when you right? say the clock's not it's, ticking i I'm, I'm i'm kind of dumbfounded okay so oh he's having a good time with this all right so this is kind of well you know try to to, to, to brighten up a little bit we don't want you to feel too dumb right this second because uh, <laughs> we've got other things we have to share with people do right? we that's right we have things that we're sharing with people. So Daniel's, can you see his palette, you guys? Kind of. Kind of. You can see his palette right there. Can you, you can see. Over? No, no, you know, no. no. Just, 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 just leave things alone. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> Listen, I'm asking. This is not Dan a bad thing. I ask him if you can Dan see the Daniel, palette. Daniel, yes. You move your painting up about an inch and over just about a half inch. This way. Yes, please. That'll work. Perfect. There we go. Good. Thank you. You all right? Speaking of auctions, while you while he's yeah. painting that real Speaking quick, of here's a, here's a, one, another one of our pieces. This is a this was a video we did on YouTube. You guys remember this? And with a nice green vase, that's going to be that's one of the paintings on our auction. That's uh, kind of nifty. We've got uh, we've got some great stuff, you guys. So everybody should check it out. See what we're going. Gingercookauction.com. Now, if they want to, the secret word for this is pick me. Uh, how many, uh, we got some people still watching us? Um, there's only 476 left. Oh, okay, so, and we got some entries in this. Don't you love, now we this is worth seeing how he's doing these clouds. Look at that, you guys. Don't you just love that? And that pink background couldn't be better, right? Oh, absolutely. That's just, oh, uh, it's out of the microphone. What we've been doing is taking the leftover paint and just painting canvases. You might feel very inspired by that. Uh, I, I do the same thing. Do you do the same lot. thing? Yes. Uh, whenever I have extra paint on a palette, I, I keep little small wood panels and I keep the little pads and I keep that ripped so paper. Weird. I don't waste any, I don't waste a drop of paint if I can help it. I figure I do enough of that when I screw up a painting, so, and have to, you know, cover and recover. So if I've got paint left after I've been painting, no, that gets used. So um, one thing that you might find interesting, uh, one of our uh, one of our students, what she does is she has like a jar and she takes it all together, mixes it, makes it gray, and just sticks it yep. in a jar, and then everything goes gray. So I mean, there's some options if you don't have enough. It makes of anything. a wonderful ground. Yeah, it makes it, a beautiful it, neutral gray depending on how much of any of the color different colors you've got. you got. So that's what she's doing. But in other words, we're not throwing it out. Occasionally, though, we do keep a palette just the way it is, mm -hmm. and and we sell the palette, you know. So, uh, you know, which is sort of fun, too. Uh, we'll sell the palette and put that, or give it away. It just depends. You know? I'm loving these clouds that you're building here. That, that's just awesome. Thank and you. I think there's so many different ways that one can make clouds. You saw some that he's doing. But the fact that the clouds are not like puffy white Bo Peep things is good, too. Um, well, they don't always look like popcorn. No, they don't always look like popcorn. So oh, I love that. That's just great looking. Seems like we're having a problem with the mic now. Why? What's the matter with it? With Daniel's. With mine? Yeah, it's picking up static somewhere. Oh. Interesting. I'm going to turn his off. So nobody can hear you really well. Very, very good. So don't say anything important. Now I can just say foul words. <laughs> I didn't touch it. Mm. It's been coming and going. It took me a while to figure out whose it was. Well, and John's very sensitive to sound. You know who's really sensitive to sound is Cinnamon's husband, John. You know, oh, really? John yeah, we. Mm -hmm. I remember going to a movie theater, and um, he went complained to the management. He couldn't hear all the speakers. He wanted his money back. Surround sound. He felt that two of the speakers were not working, and we're looking at him like he's crazy, Insane. right? But I mean, he can tell. I mean, if he can hear I, it, that's God he, bless him. He, he can hear it. I mean, he really. I've been to too many concerts. I'm, I'm lucky. I hear my own voice some days. Uh, Daniel, do you do you prefer a filbert, a flat, a bright, or a general purpose brush? All right. And we're getting your static back. All uh, right. 
I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. Well, I know where it's coming from. But well, why don't we um, put, put my talking. microphone on him? Yes. Um, we're, oh, it's right there. Put it. Careful. Can you do it? Okay, see if we talk. Can All right, can you hear me? Yeah. When I'm working in acrylics, I prefer brights. When I'm working in oils, I use filberts. <gasps> Isn't that interesting? Ginger, do you have anything to say? Let me see if I can hear you. Can you hear me? No. Oh. Yeah, you're real soft. I'm real soft. Well, I can speak up. Yeah, this is what I... I there was another uh, um, very, very famous oil painter named uh, uh, Lily Doll. Um, mm -hmm. And she did fabulous portrait artist and um, she was she said the same thing that for mm -hmm. acrylic she liked brights but she liked a filbert and someone says what is a filbert do you see a filbert over there you can show people what a filbert is it's a cat tongue that one's a cat tongue filbert and so that's a little pointier so let's the brown see one right there is that one right there the blue one oh. green one there that one there you this, go this one this is a filbert you guys has got the rounded um, uh, edge to it Okay, like that, and the brights are more squared. They make one. What do they call the real long one that's squared? That's an Egbert. Oh, I hate those. Because <laughs> you don't like the it's name. A, well, it's a it's a it's a super 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 long filbert, but it's a little more square than a regular filbert. Um, or if it's really long, then that would be a flat. If it's long, let's. So which one were you thinking of? Well, I don't have on it because I hate yeah. them. <laughs> Flats have their purpose. Again, every single brush, every art supply that is out there, they, they all exist for a reason. But we have our favorites. I love what you're doing here. Look at that. You can, you can see it in the monitor. That is yeah. fantastic. Oh, Isn't it, you. you guys? Don't you think that's just absolutely fantastic? Aren't those the most amazingly awesome clouds? Just awesome. See? I think everyone sky can the other realize way. why why you know my work is cool when I make it all up as I go along. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And, and certainly, certainly clouds, right? Mm. Certainly clouds are just kind of, and I could see where music would help with clouds too. Oh yeah, uh, I just move color and light around, and then eventually it kind of looks like something, or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, I just add more. Do you oh, have a Do you have a favorite brand of brushes? Do I have a favorite brand? Well, it depends on we all have our favorites uh when i'm working in acrylics i do like the ruby satins uh from silver brush a great deal and i would say that's one of my favorites and then uh, when i'm working in oils i have several that i love 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 it's okay. We don't, yeah. They don't sponsor me. The Silver yeah. Brush Company doesn't sponsor me. Say any brand you want. I use them. <laughs> I use them because I use them, and I say my, that. But my I mean, my Kalinskis that I use are Escoda. Um, that's my favorite, and uh, but I also love my Raphaels, and I and I, I really like my Raphaels. And then uh, Da Vinci makes some absolutely wonderful brushes as well. And uh, as far as hog hair brushes go. Um, it's escaping me, and it's it's my new favorite. And <laughs> my friend Zach, who is a rep for the company, is going to kill me because I can't remember. Uh, I think it's another Raphael, but I can't remember the name of the line that I just tried this year that I fell in love with. So uh, that'll be on his Facebook page. Yeah, it'll end up there somewhere with a big apology to my friend. Perhaps you'd like to become a member of our Facebook cl club, and then you could post your artwork on Saturdays, because we do original artwork on Saturdays. Really? Would you like to be a member of our Facebook club? Even we'll make an exception, uh, even though you're doing oil. Uh, could oh, we, could I we, might just um, have to uh, crack uh, Excuse me. Acrylic. Yeah. Sock folder doesn't like the wire going through the paint. Oh. Hmm. Could we please eliminate that, please? <laughs> Move that one piece closer to him. Do I need to come over and do things? He's threatening now. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. This is good. All right, I'll just, uh, I'll tape it down here, John. Um, I, no, I, I, let me do, just, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> this makes John crazy. <laughs> Let's all unfold our socks. That brush you're using now. How about under here like this? Yes. No. no? 
the one we just got on the... Yeah, it's whatever was here. This is one I've never used before. Right, that's that company. This is called... Uh, I don't know. Who can read that? Something. I don't pro. know. Art Art Pro, number six. Art Some... Art Pro, number six. Go Art Art Pro. These are actually kind of nice. I mean, I think for the money, you, can, you know, I think they're, yeah. you know, kind of not... You know, we'll see how long they last. Well, yeah, I mean, we that's that's generally... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a throwaway ticket item. Well, believe it or not, people, these, this actually has a really nice snap to it. has a nice reaction. You know they're guaranteed Holds well. for life? These are? Yeah, that's what they say yeah. on their website. Uh, life or... I don't know whose life, but somebody's life. Here they are. Let me see. All right, here's a, here's a package of them. You can turn them over, they're called. Yeah, these are great. I think it's like, it, what, they were under ten, they yeah. were under $12, right? Like all, all these brushes for like... Uh, it was like 10, well, I think that said I got for six bucks. Six bucks, which was on sale. Wow. I mean, you know, we're always looking for that. We're also, you know, <laughs> when you have to buy all your own stuff, we're always yeah. looking for the deal. We're, right? we're just as cheap as the rest of you. You know, we're always looking for the deal. Oh. And if we find a deal, we'll tell you. We tell, if it doesn't care what it, we don't care what it is. We'll absolutely tell you. Let's throw that on the floor. Well, of course. Of the towels here. Well, my fingers, I burn. I'm like a smurf today with all this blue all I, over my hands. I burn through brushes so quickly. I have hundreds of them. So, yeah, I'm always looking for a good inexpensive brush to be, to, to be beating up. I love these. Easy. Will this show be posted so we can rewatch it? No, I think we'll take this one down. Of course you're going to rewatch it. <laughs> we'll leave it up, yeah. And then listen, make comments, share this thing. You want to, you know. Uh, if you want Daniel back, show, show him a little love by asking him some more questions and let's torment him. Yeah, yeah, let's ask him some questions. Ask me know. questions. And again, thank everybody who um, was so kind as to, uh, uh, you know, contribute to Daniel's. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Well-being. Well-being tonight, <laughs> because all, all the donations that came in tonight are going directly to Daniel. He will get those, so thank you guys for doing that. But those of you who missed the story earlier, he f um, uh, found himself through rather extraordinary circumstances. Uh, one week employed, the next week not. One week promised a big promotion, the next <laughs> week no promotion existed. And the same week his car broke, his tooth, to his tooth <laughs> broke, his... Yeah. his I mean, what else happened? That was, that oh, was a thing, right? Uh, it, it was a country song. It was ridiculous. Uh -huh. I, I lived a country song for <laughs> better part of the summer. It was it was it was just silly. Um, so anyway, that's kind of um, uh, that's kind of how it's been uh, been going. And um, so anyway, I'm so glad he came on the show tonight and showed us this because this is fantastic. I think what we learned tonight was amazing. With so many good things, you should watch this. Probably want to watch this again. Just take notes of all the great information everything from two point perspective to um uh his his uh, color palette what he thinks about uh, different uh, art materials and so forth really interesting wow. so all right i think we're about done yeah. here john what do you think were we pretty close to done with this one i um, call I'm this not, one done i'm not no no keep painting i just want no to, oh, i'm done a, we have a um uh go ahead and close off our our, uh, okay, it's going to be the last call for entries into this. The uh, link is on the on your monitor yeah, right now. Ten minutes while he's yeah. doing the drawing, if you want to keep playing. But I just yeah, you can, you just keep you playing. Just keep playing, and we'll, we'll just do the drawing here. I'm going to keep wrecking it if I. Yeah, it. It looks. I think it looks pretty awesome. As soon as I, uh, I'm going to put a couple. Has of uh, has Daniel ever used the Sherpa brushes? Yes, I have. They're very nice. What's the name of the brushes again that we were using, that he was using? Art something? Well, we found these on Amazon, and they're called Artist, A-D, I guess it's A-D-I-S, not Artist. It's A-D-I-S, Art Pro, Addis. Addis Pro. Addis Pro, A-D-I-S Pro. Yeah. We've got them on Amazon. We just, yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm always looking at those deals of the day, and I saw right. these. And thought, oh, I don't know, let's try those. I mean, there were a lot of brushes for the money. I mean, mm -hmm. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten I believe there's 12. Ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Ten, yeah. ten brushes for, 
You know, I mean, I thought, you know, that's... That's, uh... Practically a dollar brush, you know. Yeah. I think you got it for six. It was even less than that. It was a, it was a good deal. And no that shipping. That was a super deal. I don't see how they could afford to ship it to us. Give us a brush for six bucks and ship it to us next day. Yeah, that was Because it was all part of the deal. But I love this pe peach here in the sky, and I love this peach down here. This is a fantastic uh, painting, and I'm so glad you guys have entered. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah. I think this is just absolutely too too cool. And uh, who's who's our... Uh, we, we've closed the... Um, no, we haven't closed that. I'm still answering questions because they're going to go flying by, and I'll miss them. Oh, yeah. So Daniel, we'll do you paint with both hands? Yes. Daniel, was any of your art out here in Las Vegas? In Vegas? No. Well, not in any galleries out in Vegas. Eric, it's going to be your opportunity to purchase the first piece on the auction. <laughs> and you can have the first Daniel Elliott in Las Vegas. At least as far as I know. I mean, I, 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 I have not shipped to Vegas. I don't know if any of my previous buyers have moved to Vegas. <laughs> so... Daniel, what is the best acrylic painting surface, and what is your favorite canvas brand? All right. Favorite canvas is Paramount Pro. Um, that's I from really Jerry's, do right? love working on those. Um, what was the other part of the question? What's the, what's the best painting surface? Painting surface? Of all surfaces in the world. Mm, depends on what subject matter you're painting. Ooh. A caveat. Uh, it it really does make a difference. Uh, linen is preferable if you're doing portraits, uh, and some landscapes if it's a really good rough, knotty uh, linen. And I do like wood panels. It, it really depends on what what kind of flavor I want in the work because uh, the way the the substrate reacts to the brush stroke and to the knife mark, uh, it's all very different. And panel can be a pain for some, and some of my pain, trust me, I've used pan panels a few times and really regretted it, uh, because it's so stiff, it doesn't give, and so it changes the way you paint. Okay. So I bounce okay. back and forth. Okay. Okay. All right, we're closing the entries. Does Daniel ever paint florals or gardens like ginger? Uh, gardens... Never. Um, <laughs> okay. Never. Uh, I don't believe I've ever painted a garden. Um, Maybe like I've done close-ups, like singular flower or a couple of uh, flowers, but I'm not... It's, just, it's never been a subject matter that, you know, again, we all practice and we try things, but I, it's not something that I tend to do very often, no. And never have I done a garden. Oh, I think we should give you one to uh, try your hands at. Oh, please no. <laughs> I can think of a couple of good ones, uh, can't you, Ginger? There's, there's a, a wonderful artist that passed away named uh, Kincaid. <laughs> and I, I know Miss Ginger loves his work, and I hate his work. Every <gasps> you don't like Ginger's work, then? I love Ginger's work. Uh, but most of the Kincaid stuff I could throw... Because I've never liked any of Kincaid's work. I've never found a painting by Kincaid that I enjoyed. Hmm. Well, it's I mean, just not my thing. And, yeah. 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 It's, you know. And also, um, I think that there's, I think that there's such a thing as guy paintings. Yeah. Don't you think so there's just, you know, there's guy subjects. Like for instance, like I, I've never wanted to paint a jet plane. Exactly. Oh, I'd want to paint a jet plane. Exactly. Are and, we gonna do that? Or, or cockroach. Or, and oh yeah. Yeah, and, and, and a lizard. Or lizards. You know, it just isn't my thing. Or puppy dog's tails. It just, you know, just there's Can, just things. Right. That, I think there's I think there's such a things as gender specific art. Right. Uh, or at least kind of le gender leaning, I, I guess. I. Uh, but it's a certain artists. I mean, that there's a reason why there's so many artists out there, and lots of subjects. To yes. Uh, I mean, I could promise most people I know wouldn't like my favorite artist or would appreciate a little bit but would find it too creepy. So, uh, my favorite artist... Um, yeah, who's your favorite artist? Currently... Besides me. Currently, <laughs> uh, his name is Johan Barrios, and he's a young artist. Uh, he's from Colombia, uh, and he actually now lives local, and... 
he is by far and away my favorite at the moment. And he is he's brilliant surrealist borderline dark without being creepy. Or creepy without being dark. It's wonderful. Alright, you guys, so how many our entries are closed? So let's do a drawing for Daniel's painting. Thank you for staying uh, hanging in there with us. Uh, uh, if you want to know more about Daniel, he's got a uh, a Facebook page, which is what? Daniel Elliott Art. Daniel Elliott Art. Pretty That's simple. That's two T's. Uh, yes, two L's, two T's. And then uh, my Instagram is the same. Okay, his Instagram. And also, we have the Ginger Cook uh, Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook. And if you're not a member and you enjoy uh, acrylic art and like the, the art tutorials on our show, what we do, uh, come uh, hang out with us too. That's, that's We have some great times there, full of wonderful information and You'll find out a lot about what John and I are up to, too. So that's always fun. So, uh, John, you've got a, a drawing for us? Was I supposed to be drawing something over here? Yes, this is a painting class. Why okay. should I be drawing? Well, you were supposed to be doing my portrait, John. Yeah. She was doing the portrait. I remember that in the beginning. We okay. could rewind this. All right. <laughs> who's, the, who's the lucky winner of this painting? Yeah. Ah. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 318. Your random number between 1 and 318 is 291. Wow. Ooh, they got in by the skin of their teeth, didn't they? Yes, 291. They did. Wow, wow. I know who the winner is. Who is that? Would you care to share? Ivan Smith. Ivan, Ivan Smith. Smith. A guy got it. A great guy. Got well, it. we're assuming Ivan Smith is a guy name. Wouldn't be a guy? Mm -hmm. Ivan? This day and age, I give I know, up. I know, I'm Ivana, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, that was a toothpaste, remember that? Sorry, Winner of <laughs> painting. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so what you have to do, Ivan, is you have to go to gingercooklive.gallery, contact us, give us your address so we know where to mail the painting. All right? And then that would be your mailing address, please. Not your email address, okay? Now here's the other painting that Daniel uh, did today, and you can... If someone would like to be own this one, the um, bigger one, the bigger one that will be in our art auction, gingercookauction.com. Uh, John will get that up by tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. It'll be available to bid on, okay? And uh, the auction will close in three weeks, so that's a fun one, as well as some of the other great paintings that we've got in our auction that I was going to show you some more, but I guess. Oh, I'm going to show you this one because some of the paintings that we've got have never been lessons. And so here's one that's an example that's uh, in our art auction, and that's never been a lesson. That was going to be a lesson. I never did it as a lesson. So there's some really interesting ones in there, too. Check us, check us out. You should do that one as a lesson. That's a good one. Well, I might still, but in any event, <laughs> we're, we're getting kind of swamped with pictures. We're getting almost buried under all the paintings. We do so many every week. So mm -hmm. we're, we, anyway, we like to do that. We think this is fun. Uh, congratulations, you've also won a couple tubs of towel uh, deals. You want to draw for a tub, some tub of towels? Sure, I'm sitting here doing nothing. I can draw a tub of towels. Uh, um, we'll just do two more packages of tub of towels. So we'll send to somebody since you guys were so patient. And um, Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 318. Your random number between 1 and 318 is 79. Oh, I knew you'd take me all the way to the other end. 79, okay, all right. So 79 is? Suzanne Zimmerman. Suzanne Zimmerman. All right, That's Suzanne, you're going to love these. I will absolutely love them. I've got, oh, how many I've gone through tonight, but you don't see any paint on my hands, and I was a smurf <laughs> a little while ago, plus it cleaned up the table, and you clean, you're cleaned up too. No paint on your hands either. So this has been fun. Thanks, Daniel, for hanging out there with us. Oh, we really appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me. You and, know I love coming over. And, you know, we'll try to have Daniel back uh, uh, in... Uh, in the future. In the future. We don't know when, but we'll try to have him back in the future. And, uh, and of course, your comments and questions. Daniel reads the comments, not just the ones that you're typing in now, but when after this uh, process is on YouTube um, and it's now up, there's a place to, you know, you can then comment again. And be sure to uh, send in some comments to Daniel, and because uh, he will read and answer those. I've committed him. Yes. Ah. <laughs>
I'm usually pretty good. I, I've been pretty good in the past uh, on answering and following up. And, and also, we'll put a li I'll put a link in the description of where the playlist is for Daniel if you want to see some of his. He has a, some great paintings on clouds here that he's done for us in the past. All right. Is okay. there anything else we need to say? No, except good night, nope. guys. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Sammy, you are you around, my boy? Can you take us home? I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.